We are a nerd eternal network. Hello and welcome to the Nerd Eternal Network presents Icons of the Primes. Finally, issue two. So many printer delays. Yeah. We've had a couple of cancellations. Uh, we've had people operated on. We've had people sick. We've had people we know die. It's, it's, it's been a thing. for. We've had union issues at the, the printing press. Mm-hmm. So the, because uh, we've had what? It's been, it's just been two cancellations in a row? I want to say three. Yeah. Because I know we play every other week. Issue, oh, issue one was published on July 24. Ooh. Okay, we probably we probably recorded it a week or so earlier. Yeah. So on eight twenty one, you sent the message. I hate to do this again. <laughs> so we have to assume you canceled there and a week before, two weeks before. Okay. So it's been a minute. And then nine oh three, we also canceled. Uh. So yes, it has been a while. Who remembers what happened in the first issue? Oh, uh, we fought Skyscraper and Gothic, and they also had along, uh, I want to say Squadron and the Space Pirate Asshole from the first season. Right. Ultra Aquani. Uh, you don't remember his name? S- He's Seth- a nerd. Sethagua and Gothic had a goth off. Mm-hmm. Which Puppet ended up winning. And Puppet won. <laughs> They were trying to run and, their... uh, Oh, go ahead. Yeah, that's right. You're, uh, I think you're leading into they're looking for something, which we never figured out. Also, yeah. Transmuter let um, let Squadron go because he was uh, being held captive via uh, Explosive Coward. Mm-hmm. And he took off for, for parts unknown. Well, he helped y'all for a round or two. Yeah. Yes, he did. Did his bare minimum. He did the least. And we made our public debut as a prime. We did the least. Really, just stopping uh, stopping from attacking us was was immensely helpful because he was pretty effective that way. Oh yeah. Now, does anyone remember what it was that that team was after? We never found out. They were just sort of rummaging yeah. through the side of an apartment of a of a office building, literally just reaching in yeah. and pulling stuff out. Until Transmuter solidified the air inside. Like a bat. <laughs> Building don't look too stable. Here, I'll just turn this entire section to a little keystone and hold it up. There we go. <laughs> and then I, then I buried the space pirate. Yes, yes, you did. And then I knocked myself out. I seem to recall that as well, yes. Yeah. Uh, now the I'm trying to remember. Did you talk to the media any? There uh, was a we, brief Q and A. We introduced ourselves them, and then we're teleported out yeah. by yep things by Sharon. <laughs> Sharon, our All boss right. slash uh, niece or whatever. What's she again? Is she our, technically our granddaughter? Or how, um, how, what's the relation? Niece, She's I believe. Niece. Yes, she is your niece. I, I, I know Seth was calling her grandma niece. Uh, <laughs> technically, you're a half niece, if that's a thing. I don't know. She'd be the daughter of, of your deceased half sister. Oh, we didn't know. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> She's not deceased. I'm sorry. The. <laughs> What would be your grandmother is deceased. The, the, the promise's wife is deceased. His daughter is not. And okay. it's the granddaughter that is carting y'all around. I'm sorry. Let me get the family tree sorted out there. Sorry. I it's mean, been you're kind a of. Month you're, or two. You're, we're, you're juggling a weird setup with the family. It's not. It's not we understand. Uh, not traditional. Yeah, it's not traditional family structure. Yes. <clears throat> yes, it is. Uh. But Sharon was very happy with how y'all handled yourselves. Uh, there is a 
sort of locker room, you know, play-by-play -play review later. And she points out some things you could have done better that, that, that I had specifically thought of last time we played. I don't remember what they were now. Uh, but, you know, she points out some ways, you know, some ways you could improve, uh, uh, but points out, you know, what a good job you did, uh, particularly those couple of really clever things Transmuter did. Yeah, Transmuter takes this debriefing, like, super seriously and super critically, um, particularly how, towards herself. How does she take And perhaps towards that, um... Uh, she would not it would be weird she's not used to getting those compliments she might actually wonder if they're she, she'd probably be expecting some big like uh some big like uh uh tongue lashing like like this is a setup to the big boom of like what what you what how you screwed up as opposed to like just being a compliment on its own terms mm -hmm. and like i, I said this out there that i think um before the Primuses got together, Transmuter's home life must have been really messed up. <laughs> this is coming from Seth. Yeah. But, yeah, she she would come off as being very regimented to the point where it's a pr pr probably to the point that it's annoying. But, um, and that may rub off on how she reacts to you all. Like, if, if, she, she, if she, like, during our training period, uh, pre session zero, she probably would have like, been like, if she if she got hypercritical with you, it's it would be no less than what she's you know jerking towards herself. But you know, that can be resolved in flashbacks if and when. Okay. I'm trying to think if there was any major. I can't think of any major scripts y'all had last session. I mean, we almost got taken apart in the first round on the first yeah. page. That's fair, but you were fighting experienced villains, and you rallied. You, you rallied, and you worked together pretty well. Like they were experienced villains, and all of them were pretty damn powerful. Yeah, Puppet definitely had our back. Mm -hmm. He was he was propping us up. Mm -hmm. I got knocked down like twice in the fight, and just stood back up. That's yep. what I do. <laughs> right. It took He's... me too long to change my strategy, but um, you know. Mm. What is a superpower? He's a weeble. He wobbles, but he doesn't fall down. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So the following week, <clears throat> there's some more training, of course. Uh, there's a few small outings. Uh, you stop one hostage situation, but there was nobody. Turns out there was nobody powered involved. Uh one of the hostage takers, instead of having a regular gun, had some kind of, you know, some kind of blaster weaponry he'd gotten off the black market. Mm. Uh, yeah, that sort of stuff y'all plow through without any trouble at all. Uh, the press has, of course, been talking about you. Uh, I I don't think you at the at your little Q and A review uh, after the last fight, I don't believe y'all revealed any relation to the Primus specifically. That sounds uh, right. But the information has been leaked out some sort of way that you're that there's some connection between the Primes and the Primus. Which you know, some of you some of you have color scheme stuff in favor. And, I'm sorry, what was that, Tutter? I said for the most part we're color coded to him, so it's not like we're trying to hide it. No, no, definitely mm -hmm. not. And from stuff, some stuff Sharon said, you're pretty sure she's the one that leaked it. So, you know, not specifically that you're his children, but just sort of putting into people's mind that there's a connection here. That were the rightful heirs, perhaps. <clears throat> you know, and so you've got the press theorizing on what it could be. Uh, the closest guess is one that you know. They're talking about how, you know, maybe one member is like his child who put a team together or something. Mm -hmm. uh, some theorize, hey, maybe it's maybe it's a, mm -hmm. a bunch of young supers that he was training before he passed, you know. Because he was in semi-retirement for a while, so he had time to be doing stuff.
has there been discussion of what we should tell the press, if anything, about our relationship to the, relation to the Primus? Uh, Sharon's big thing is keep the specifics secret. Now, if it gets out that you're his children, uh, there's nothing about that that would specifically let anybody track down who you are or find out, you know, your identities. Uh, but she is very big on keeping your identity secret. Uh, now, while Sharon had great things to say about how what y'all did, uh, my transmuter gets a second uh, review oh, from the from the Oxford Commando. Yeah, he is less impressed. Uh, you know, two of the villains got away, uh, which he blamed, which he he seems to hold you personally responsible for. Uh, mm. There was a lot of damage to the building. He ignores the fact that the building was damaged when you showed up. <laughs> uh, but at least you at least you didn't let it fall down, which is about the closest he comes to a compliment in his entire rant. <clears throat> uh, Do any of the uh, any of the rest of us over here that review or is it? This would probably be at some point when she was back home. <clears throat> uh, so back in the early thing. right uh, so this far into it only Zach has met the Oxford Commando and that was in the, when they initially him and uh, Sharon initially went and recruited Transmuter and only kind of met him in passing then hmm. <clears throat> even then he got a he got a taste of the Oxford treatment or saw the yeah. latest taste of it Oh, I like I like I like that phrase, the Oxford treatment. <laughs> it's something all the people that Commando was trained speak of. Uh, but uh, so in this inter intervening time, uh, Mike, what does Transmuter do with any of her time that she's like kind of not on duty with the team? <clears throat> You know, the time she spends back home. Uh, right. Oh, the training would continue. Absolutely. Um, you know, there would still be a lot of, uh, like, uh, I imagine there would still be a, like, this might be the time when she's catching up on all the solo tactics that she's uh, neglected while she's revamped her program to be part of the team. Okay. So it's almost like she's conducting two different programs at the same time, which has only increased the pressure on her. Okay. Zach, what does Helios do? Uh, I'd say he's been spending a lot of time trying to untangle the code for this god-awful not Uber Eats app. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's dealing with four other people's code at this point, and it is completely incomprehensible. And this is the most stressful moment in his life, including <laughs> supervillain fights. Because he has about a week to get this done, and it's awful. He pines for the time when Skyscraper was trying to step on him. Mm -hmm. All right, Curtis, what does Seth, what's a, what's a Seth Agua? Seth Agua. I'll, I'll get it sorted. Seth is probably fascinated with the idea of having family. So he is mm -hmm. probably going to follow one of his siblings around anyway. Um, whoever it would annoy the most, probably. That would be me. <laughs> Not to speak for anyone else. I was like, I thinking the same guess. thing. <laughs> that would be kind of funny, imagining. Yeah, like, um, yeah, so just imagining Seth, who's, I don't know, have you even, like, like actually exercised in your life? Do you, have you ever like, carried out any kind of, like, discipline, anything? No. Mm -hmm. So I imagine, uh, yeah, she basically just, you, you, yeah, you, she, she would, uh, you know, you, you'd be allowed to come, you, you'd, you'd be invited to join her in, uh, you know, at her facility in Arlington and stuff, and, you know, probably, and I imagine sleepover too, which would be very amusing, because then you get to meet my mom, and, and my, mo my mom and stepdad, but 
she would she would insist on you at least like putting an effort to like you know try to keep up with the trading while while you're sticking around. Which would all, which would also be amusing. Yeah. <laughs> by the end of, by the end of the weekend, you're almost able to do a chin up. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Taylor, Puppet doesn't really have a home to go back to, at least in his opinion. That is true. So Puppet what does is, he do? Puppet is in-depth attempting to, one, relearn English, and two, he's continuing to sketch his himself. Because okay. he can he can do medical diagrams by hand that just, it would suck, and it's horrible, but he's got the time, and he can't read anymore so physically drawing what his body is doing is his only way to really record it for himself so to see his day by day changes see what is moving in his body and what isn't he's drawing out the sections of his body that have the worst damage over and over trying to record the how, trying to get an idea of how how quickly, Fast slowly, or whatever that is, that is mending. Yeah. Yeah. Are things changing in a positive direction or not? Okay. Uh, might he also be doing things like memory games and whatnot to see if his mind is improving? Yeah, and he's got, you know, things that he doesn't need. Like, he still takes a regular meal time, sits down, and pretends to eat. Because psychologically... He still needs that structure. I'm, I believe I will still someday be a person. I need to maintain the person things. So he will stop and go to the bathroom and sit down and do nothing for a little bit. And then get up, wash his hands, and step out of the bathroom. Gotcha, gotcha. Just, just to maintain the regular human beings do these things things. Step one, sit on toilet. Step two, read comic book can't read so look at the pictures <clears throat> he has to bring a comic book because the phones require body heat and he doesn't have enough of that right now oh that's true think about that. clearly you don't read atomic robo then because it's been a thing in atomic robo of him complaining about how cell phones are. <laughs> of like him calling up it's been uh, a while. uh him calling up uh steve jobs back you know this was back before he passed of course and complaining about it <clears throat> <laughs> and talking about how you you know you have veterans coming back and having to get you know replacement limbs, so it's not an issue just for him; it's for other people. Too. Oh right. <clears throat> uh, so, puppet is basically staying at the base. Uh, so Sharon is usually around. Sharon is keeping tabs on you. Sharon's always asking you what you're doing. Uh, she is usually taking the meal at least at least one meal a day with you. Uh, uh, she would she would be regularly inquiring as to you know how it's going because uh, she would very much like you to get back you know one back healthy uh, or at least enough that she could you know that the two of you could uh, alert your mother you know puppet is uh, I know last episode or issue pu puppet had uh, you had said you know puppet was. You know, wasn't going to go to his mother looking like he does and, you know, yeah, being as mentally like fragmented. I would like to look in, in some form not a horrible monstrosity right. in front of the woman <laughs> who is the mother of the body I currently inhabit. So, uh, you know, Sharon is respecting that, but would really like to not be keeping, you know, keeping it a secret from a mother that her kids are walking around. But anyway, the, uh, so, you know, y'all have a couple of weeks, and like, it's, it's, a lot of times it's most of the week at base training and doing some stuff, weekends at home, uh, because, you know, he lives, he got a job that he can do for more or less anywhere, uh, and really none of the rest of you are gainfully employed anyway, so there's not a whole lot of responsibilities for y'all during the week. <clears throat> Uh, this issue, the team finds jobs. 
<laughs> it's almost October. I almost can. Uh, oh. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Took me a minute. I'm very in character. <laughs> <laughs> There's a series of novels called Superpowers. Uh, that it's a bunch of, you know, college kids going to, like, the superhero college. Uh, and, yeah, part of their thing is they've all got to go work at this, like, bar club thing off campus. Because they've got to practice having jobs and keeping secret identities. Mm. Uh, but anyway, y'all are training one day. The alarm, you know, the alert goes off. Sharon calls you in. Uh, uh, she's, uh, she's caught word of some sort of, uh, attack, uh, at a laboratory. Uh, she doesn't go into where she got this information, uh. I mean, she does not act like it's secret. It's just things are in kind of a rush. Uh, somebody from the from the office has called out, claiming that there are superpowered uh, assailants. Uh, it is close enough that the uh, oh, crap. We're calling. We're we calling your flying thing the van or the sedan. Uh, the sedan. Yeah. I believe. Uh. But it's close enough that the sedan can go, you know, you know, more or less shoot up orbital for a little bit and, and which is a little bit of travel, then drop back down and get you there pretty quickly. Uh, no word on who is attacking. Uh, you know, they mentioned somebody in the hood. They mentioned somebody else is like, you know, clearly of like superhuman size, you know, big hulking monstrosity. Did you say someone in a hood and then a big hulking monstrosity? Yeah, that was two separate somebodies. Uh, so you know, everybody gets in costume as much as, as much as they wear of one anyway. Uh, you load up in the shuttle. She's piloting, of course. Uh, you take up from the base, which is you know kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I forget now where I'd said it was. I don't think you said where the lab was. Nope. Well, I meant the base. Uh, ah. I don't think it was Kansas, but it was somewhere. It was somewhere out there in middle America, I think. Its location is a secret, so you shouldn't tell it. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's, uh, it's about a. The Oklahoma Plains. It's about a fifteen-minute <laughs> flight. Uh. Eastward. You're not even really sure what state y'all are dropping back down into. But she kind of buzzes over the parking lot of this place and just sort of beams you out the same way she picked you up earlier. Or picked you up, you know, in the last session. So let me turn on the Roll20 map here where everybody can see it. And then we will flip y'all over. And roll 20 so you guys can see it. Alright, so you can see your guys are down here. As you land, you see a hooded a woman in a hood here. And this guy over here is probably partially obscured by the truck. As y'all were coming in in the vehicle, you would have spotted that somebody was there, but not gotten a good look at uh, Go ahead and roll me initiative. Yes, sir. I have actually rolled. I have actually rolled the other people's initiatives in advance. It's probably what jinxed oh, us. Ooh, I got the best initiative I could get. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So Puppet got a 7. Sarah got a 6. 
Sick out of four. Helios got a five. And where is transmuter in my list? I do not see transmuter. Let me give transmuter a turn. Transmuter got an eight. Descending first. order. Oh, this first needs the heralds. All right, so first person to go is right here. Uh, so y'all land, you drop down, or get kind of ported down. Uh, let me zoom the map in just ever so slightly. Like I said, y'all are in the parking lot of the building. You can see the little turning door. Not that Seth would bother to ask, but I'm assuming she did not tell us what they were after, if if she had a clue. She didn't say. She she just said that somebody inside the lab had called out and, and said what was going on. Uh, communication with the lab seemed to have been cut after that, which would involve cutting landlines and having to jam cell signals. So this is probably some kind of coordinated you know effort. All right, so this guy steps up, you know, kind of to the edge of the truck. Uh, kind of looks at y'all. Who are you supposed to be? Girl Scouts. You want, buy some cookies? you want some cookies? We got cookies, man. From YouTube? No, thank you. And then he looks at the transmuter. But how are you doing? Uh, I can't. I don't have any good. I don't have any good rejoinders uh, coming to mind. Sorry, she's uh, not used to compliments from people. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. She's literally. Uh, that's exactly. <laughs> That's ex I, 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 yeah, I think that's exactly how the response goes. He, 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 Seth, will um, at, Seth will look at the other two like, brother, dead brother, I don't like the way he's talking to Sis. <laughs> brother, dead brother. <laughs> yeah, is, is Seth the only one who actually refers to us as, as siblings, as, as like brothers, brothers and sisters? Because I, I know I'm not as a comfortable yes, guy. publicly, out in front of everyone. <laughs> hey, we're a family. Hey, there's just a couple people here, and they're not recording it, so yeah. Hey, my characters are always, you know, very careful and conscious of their surroundings and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Just ask very, Landshark. Very delicate operation. Hey, Landshark was very, very knowledgeable about where water was. <laughs> he was. Uh -oh. He could smell water and evil from, you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's see. Do any of y'all have... Actually, y'all would have covered, uh, your training would have covered some about known superpowered individuals. Everybody give me an intelligence roll. If you've got a skill like something about, you know, criminology or something specifically that references supervillains, I forget, you know, I forget what your specialties are. But... Uh, oh, it's going to be one of those games, huh? Are they occult <laughs> supervillains? No, they are not specifically a cult. Okay. Um, will my super senses help me remember the details of their face better if I was shown a picture? <laughs> uh, sounds like you're just rolling intelligence. Yeah. I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm nice. Still, still kind of the high, <laughs> time for highest still. Yeah, I got a pair of tens. Hey. 
How did I get a nine rolling a d6? <laughs> what? what did this thing do to me? It critted. <laughs> That's why you have two exclamation points there. Right. Huh. Don't oh. let roll 20 trying to be fun distract you. Roll again. <laughs> I was trying to hit the little quickie d6 that they're going to, into the advanced. All right, the difficulty is five. Who got above a five? I think we all did. Excellent. Uh, Curtis so got a four. I got a five. I thought I got a... Well, that's, those no, are Cur so... Curtis got an eight. A four oh. was from his initiative. Oh, oh, oh yeah, okay. Okay, okay, yeah. So five, eight, ten, and ten. So yes. You actually recognize both of these individuals. The man mm. standing in front of you... Let me show the players... Ah, oh, I knew it. Is Siphon. The woman standing in front of you. Is known as Wraith. And they are two members of the Mutant Defense Militia. Oh, boy. They are generally regarded as terrorists. A, a certain percentage of, of a certain amount of the population uh, looks at them as heroes. Uh, uh, you know there have been instances where they've clashed with uh, the mutant or the uh, well mutant and alien hate group Mott. I remember them. Now, Mott's been in a bad way because you've got a magical hero named Mott that's tied into the Egyptian deity that's been, you know, <laughs> been so very displeased to find out what Mott's name was being used for. <laughs> uh, now, there's... Uh, Y'all are all pretty good. Uh, you also know there is a member of their team, a long-time member, uh... Named uh, Grim Dewar. A shadow powered guy. Not much in the way of a costume. Uh, and there's been some rumors lately of them having a newer member, uh, but you, you're not f particularly familiar with him. But he, you know, he has not been caught on film yet, so. You okay, big girl? Yeah, she good. Someone tripped. Ah. That's where walking will get you. Yep. Even at our age sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. All right. So that's really all he does. He does not make an initial attack. He's just kind of asking who you are. Uh, I guess Puppet will speak up. There was a call out that there was a powered attack on this building. Are you stopping human trafficking, or are you doing it? Or is this another case? Or is just this just a case of humans getting jittery uh, around uh, PWP, people with powers? I don't know if that's a thing, but I just made it a thing, I guess. It's not really, it doesn't really roll off the tongue, PWP. But anyway... The question is posed. You down with PWP? <laughs> he kind of pauses for a second. Well, yeah, we, we kind of are stopping uh, trafficking. Uh, some of it may even be human trafficking. Sorry, walking dead body here. I'm classifying humans with mutations as human. I want that on record. Uh, the hooded woman steps forward. I've seen I've seen you on the news. Uh, you were fighting that uh the giant guy in the 
the uh, high school goth gone bad. Amongst others, sure. Emo uh, chick. She looks over at she looks over at uh, Simon. These are the primes. Uh, she tells you this lab was experimenting on mutants. Probably other people too. We haven't exactly sorted out who's mutant and who's not out of the people we're rescuing. Do you have evidence that you can show fast enough that this doesn't become an altercation between us due to miscommunication? We've got some of the rescue people in the back of the truck here. Can we speak with them? Actually, yeah. Or, and for the record, Grim Noir is not going to pop out of the truck and punch me in the face if I go. Because <laughs> that would be a bad time for both of us. No, no. Grim's otherwise occupied. Uh, Sorry to hear that. I as you're talking, you're the entire man. truck shifts slightly. Uh, and you hear Ray call out, Ox! We're bringing some people around. Don't jump out and punch him. Apparently that'll go badly for everybody. Uh... Sure enough, if they lead you, if you know, you let them lead you around to the back of the truck. What? I'll bet stops for a second. Maybe someone other than me should open the door. <laughs> uh, a oh. bulletproof one Good will uh, walk up. Well, I mean, I, I just don't want to spook okay. them. Well, it's a roll-up door that's still rolled up. As you're approaching, this big guy here gets out. And like I said, she called out to Ox, hey, don't punch nobody. Uh... So big old swole up guy, hooved feet. Uh, Gorgon, is that you? Do what now? Oh, I was just referring to Gorgon of the Inhumans. Oh, yeah, right. Maybe if he did steroids for a while. <laughs> but uh, sorry, right. y'all approach. You gonna let you gonna let uh, Helios be the one that walk around back? Happy to volunteer for that. All right. You still run no. back. Sure enough, there are people laid out. Some of them are bandaged up. Some of them are unconscious. Some of them are in, uh, like, hospital gowns. Uh, some of them have obvious physical mutations. Uh, you know, a lot of them look like just normal people. Uh, uh, peek my head around. Yep, they're on the level. Uh, you, you know, one least. or two of them that are in better shape are, are kind of, yeah, they, they're, they're helping us. How long, how long have y'all been held here? Uh, one of the guys, like, I've been here a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, I, I float off my bed when I sleep. That's apparently what they were interested in. Uh, been there it's kind of annoying but uh, uh sorry about that. puppet will go ahead and pipe in to the uh to our radios hey uh boss are you are you catching all this you know how do you want us to proceed cautiously the uh the mdm are not 100 percent trustworthy but obviously if they're shutting down some mutant ex you know some experimentation on mutants that's something that needs to be done. Yeah, do we need to fake a fight for the public eye to be like uh, heroes doing hero things? Or is this just... <laughs> we investigate, investigate the facility, try to find proof that they that, that what they say they were doing, they were doing. I mean, obviously they're, they're making off of people, but those people may go into hiding. Try to find some sort of, uh, of media or some other sort of proof. You know, they can rescue the people. Maybe we can get the company busted for whatever they were doing. Uh, I share the desired outcome with the with Wraith and Siphon. Because they already have evidence. We can just use that. They All they've got so far is the people. Uh, their, uh, uh, their other member is inside trying to gather the sort of, the sort of data you're talking about. Oh. Alright, we uh 
We could send two in to assist and keep two out here. And I'll, 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 I'll talk to um, some of the people that were in the in the in the back of the bus, van, whatever it was, the truck. They'd be like, "Dead brother likes to be precise," so I just wanted to make sure. Um, when they were experimenting on you, you didn't like it, right? For a second, they look at you like, what? Who? Huh? No, of course not. And the guy that keeps being the uh, spokesman for the group is like, you know, we weren't. None of us were here willingly. Just making sure. That is that is the thing we 100% wanted to hear before we walked into a building and started cracking skulls. <laughs> See, I'm, uh, I, I'm learning from my training. I can do a push-up, too. <laughs> uh, transmitter would uh, whisper to Seth uh, a better phrasing might have been uh, did you consent to the experiments <laughs> did you like it <laughs> yeah. you know I said no but really after a while I was like yeah <laughs> after a while all them shots was like, oh, no. yeah let's get this vivisection no. going yeah <laughs> Was it Bill Murray's character in Little Shop of Horrors that liked having his teeth worked on? Uh, that's right. Uh, that sounds familiar. Yes. Steve, Steve yes. Martin was the dentist and eventually throws him out. Cause... Cut. That's harsh against Buzz. But, uh... Um, Alright, so who's going Chance inside? Would like to add... Oh, oh I'm... go ahead. If you had something to say. Uh, yeah, she, she would ask Wraith, um... You weren't, uh... From what we know of the MDM, were were they? Do we suspect that they would have been likely to like try to administer some uh, frontier justice after finding evidence? Are they into that, or are they? It is certainly possible that they could do that. Uh, there have been report. There have been reports of deaths in their attacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they busted up yeah, a. I... They bu- busted up a basically like a mutant slavery ring. You know, of, of underworld types selling superpowered individuals to foreign militaries and stuff. They pretty much killed everybody involved in that. But no one you're really sad to see die, but... They have had conversations with, with police where police officers have been badly injured. Though they don't seem to... They never seem I'm... to go out of their way to kill just kind of random folk. It, okay, their reputation sure, is kind of hit or miss. Some people, some people tell stories of being rescued by them, and it's, they paint them like heroes. You've got other stories where you know the media really likes to talk about the the other casualties in their attacks. Yeah, of course, that's what they focus on. Uh, Transmitter would probably bring up that one instance where they kind of like set themselves up as executioners of that one facility, and as this isn't going to be one of those situations, is it? Wraith looks at Siphon, Siphon looks at Wraith, and then Siphon looks at you. Well, there, there was this one guy, but he was coming right at us. Well, that's a heat of the moment thing, but you're not planning on like lining up, and you're not going to be lining up any of these people against the wall, even if they did. They were responsible for these experiments, are you? Not here now. Wraith is like, it. it's tempting, but time is a factor. We're just trying to get these people out of here right now. And Rick, enough of the lab that they can't just pick up... Uh, Right where they left off. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. I can live with that. (laughs) We can assist with both very easily. Yeah, I guess the more of us are inside, the less likely they'll be able to, like, sneak any any evidence out the back door or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah, I I, I figure, you know, maybe, maybe if we can get word of how many of your people are in there, we can help them secure the facility, I guess. Okay, so who all is going in? Transmitter. I'll go in. All right. And we said we wanted to keep uh, two people inside and two people out. Oh, okay. In that case... uh... Make sure, because if we we all go in and find out, oh, we've definitely been lied to somehow, and they just shoot off with the bus, then we're out of luck. Yeah. May I suggest... um... Maybe uh, Puppet and either me or Helios stay out. 
and then Seth and another person go in? What do you think about that? Unless um, does anyone else really want to go in? I mean, Puppet should definitely go in. Yeah. I have the most medical expertise out of anyone in the group. Oh, that's a good point. I'll know whether right. they're doing medical things or just torture. It, it is a Helios, like, bulletproof and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, the maybe Helios going? should be one of the ones to go in. I'm fine nice. with going in. Puppet and Helios. All right, so Puppet and Helios are going in. We immediately reversed the first decision we made. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're not gonna. I'm not gonna argue with good reasoning. <laughs> uh. Uh. Let's see. Wraith is gonna go in with you two. Uh, Ox climbs back up into the truck with the uh, freed victims. Uh, and then he and he he rolls the the roll up door down. And this is a truck. Think think like if you like a bread truck, or a, you know a delivery truck, but not like a full on eighteen wheeler. So Ox is trying to keep us from going in the back of the truck with the people. Well, he got out. He lets you talk to the people. And then he climbed like up the door into the back. Was closed previously. It rolled up. Yeah, it, yeah he, he, he opened it when he got out. Y'all talked to the people. When he got back in, he shut it again. Seth, yeah. Seth was going to um, sit with the people. Oh, okay. Uh, They'd be like, we're here to protect you. As and Transmitter shadow, would try to... As the shadows spread around him menacingly. They kind of <laughs> lean away from you. Uh, Ox does not seem impressed. How many of you shadow guys are there? <laughs> I mean, we got a shadow guy. Your team's got a shadow guy. I'm the only one that matters. <laughs> uh huh. Uh. Let's see. So Siphon is out there with you. Uh. Side. Uh, Siphon looks over at Transmuter. Do we really have to keep the truck here? I could be driving these people to safety already. I feel like they're uh, with the three, with the four of us here. They've got to be pretty safe now, as it is, right? Until, is it, is it until the police show up and it's a it's a truck full of mutants, you don't ever know how that's going to go. Plus my team's, you know, less than sterling reputation as far as the law is concerned. Well, were you plan was was your plan already to take off while they're still while your buddies are still investigating? Yeah, Grim Grim can get everybody out. You get the team out, no problem. My impression, I thought that they were getting more people out, that there was like more people inside the building they were trying to get out. To. All they really said was one of their people were still in there trying to get some information. Oh, okay. Uh, well, that's a, that's a fair point. What do you, what do you think, Seth? Because uh, they be on their way. I mean, they, seem, they do seem to be on the open up, and it shouldn't be that hard to be on their Well... And this is probably this is really should be me talking, not Seth. The point of us waiting out here was to make sure that they didn't take off with the people that they rescued from the building, in case they were lying, in case they were going to spirit them off for some nefarious purpose. So uh, if, if we let them take off, then we might as well have just gone inside the building with the other two uh jason correct me if i'm wrong but i'm guessing that transmitters uh impression of the mdm is that yeah they're they're rough with the humans but they're on the up and up and 
practically just a rescue organization as far as uh, powered individuals are concerned. And they're not, it's not like they're like forced coercing people. There's no evidence of them, co- like, for example, coercing people to join their ranks. No, there's no evidence of that. that. Says, um, but they have, they have carried yeah. out terrorist attacks uh, against departments of the U.S. Yeah. government. Uh, now, they are departments that they claim were involved in, you know, illegal and unethical uh, experimentation on mutants or creating weapons specifically to kill mutants or, you know. They've always got their political their political reasons why they attack this place. But sure. who knows if those are true or not. Having said yeah. that, I, over the last mm-hmm. couple of years, it has come out a couple of times about the government, branches of the government secretly having like illegal super soldier programs or experimenting on people. Uh squadron that y'all dealt with yeah, last I, season is tied into something like that. That's right. That's right. So it really comes yeah, down to how, that, how, how much does she trust uh, her government? Um, well, I would, I would say probably not terrible. Um, so I think, I think when it comes to at least like people with powers, she's going to, she, she's going to be a little more comfortable with the MDM than with the government. So with that in mind, I, I think Seth, I, Yeah, why don't we just uh, if, you know get these people patched up? I mean, there are as as you mentioned, Jason, some of them are like wounded or at least mm. not yeah bad physical shape from presumably from what they've been made to endure at this facility. I, and if we need to track them down, we, we've still got you know uh, Wraith that we could always uh, question it. if it came to that. If we found out that they weren't on the up and up, and we needed to track them down, at least we'd have Wraith on hand. To like um, get information out of this to where the, where their current location um, operations are. What do you say? Do you, do you think I'm uh, totally off track, or does that sound cool? No, I mean, if if if, if you're convinced, I, Seth will go along with you. Mm-hmm. Um, his thought, of course, would be, you know, they can go inside and they've got a building to trash. I'm sorry. His thought would be they can go inside to help, and they've got a building to trash. Oh, right. <laughs> That's All true. Right. I mean, if we, if we get, yeah, we All wouldn't right. really so have to. So it sounds, like you, two, here, sounds so. like you two are following in? Hey, uh, well, yeah, once we land. Um... All right. In that, case, I, in that case, Ivan gets in the truck. You hear the truck crank up. Good uh, luck, mutants. You take care. Yeah, exactly. Take you. Right, you take care of these people. We'll. I guess we'll, we'll see you when we see you. Yes. All right. So while all that's going on, the three in the building were already advancing into the building. So Puppet and Helios, uh, are y'all gonna lead the way? Or y'all gonna follow Wraith? I'm fine following her. Okay. I'm um, yeah. Feels okay to just follow. All right, so she leads you over this way. You pass some offices. It was like, you know, this was, uh, well, y'all can't see in there yet. But, uh, you know, that was somebody's office. It looks a little trashed. Uh, you know, this here is the security office. They trashed it. Uh. A lot of the, well, no, they wouldn't have done that. Getting ahead of myself here. Uh, you're not seeing a whole lot of people running around. Though you do hear a little whimpering. Uh, it'll, well, it's not wanting to reveal. There we go. As you pass this hallway, you can hear it sounds like, you know, whimpering or something coming out of, of some of these offices here. And the doors are shut. Uh, so, you know, it might be where somebody's barricaded themselves in. But, there, but there's nobody just wandering the halls. You see the occasional, looks like security guard or something to, that's laid out. Do they look like they're still breathing? Uh, oops. 
Never mind, she would have led you over here. Some of them are obviously still breathing. Some of them you'd have to stop and check. Do you stop and check? Sure. Uh, one guy is definitely not breathing. Uh, he looks like he's got some kind of energy beam or, you know, uh, definitely not, definitely not like a projectile weapon. There's like bird marks around it. There's a hole that goes all the way through him. He slumped there. Uh, the weapon in his hand, though, interestingly, isn't any kind of standard issue uh, pistol. It looks like some kind of freaky blaster tech. Does it look like the kind of blaster that was used in the uh, bank robbery? Bank robbery. Like the uh, bank robber, the hostage situation we stopped earlier. Uh, no, not not like specifically the same maker model or anything. No. Okay. They were both just high tech pistols. Uh, the one at the bank robber was literally a laser. This definitely not a projectile. Some kind of energy weapon, clearly. Not really legal, probably. You know to check to be sure, but there's a lot of restrictions on energy weapons. Takes a picture. Uh, so yeah, she leads you back into this area. Which there is a weird containment. Uh, some kind of containment unit in the middle there. Uh, big metal tables, huge metal strap that could hold somebody down. Uh, they've been torn off of one of the tables, though. Uh, robotic arms hanging down from the ceiling with all sorts of blades and syringes and all kinds of stuff. Uh, almost like some kind of high-tech surgery center. Uh, though there is uh, something kind of benevolent feeling about it. It's just something about it, you don't think this was a good place. This was probably not a good place at all. Hang on a second, I gotta... There we go. Alright. Sort my roll 20 out. Uh, once y'all get in there, you run into Grim Noir. He's, he's got some kind of gizmo plugged into one of their computers, and he's going through, like, physical files looking at stuff. And he's got a little stack on top of the filing cabinet he's pulled out and set up. Uh, there is a dead body in the corner. Uh, gray-haired fella... In a lab coat, his head is turned, looks like he's been turned quite sharply, almost 300, or almost 180 degrees. Oof, ouch. Does he have a name tag on him? Uh, yes. What does it say? It identifies him as Director Allen. I guess this was the guy who was overseeing the whole place. I asked that to no one in particular. Wraith <laughs> uh, Flight, yes. I believe he was the head of the facility. Uh, he was in the middle of directing though that horror show in the middle there on somebody when we showed up. Ox is very sensitive. He, he didn't respond well to, to what was going on, what was happening to that person. Can we see what was going on in the central ring? And then the director made a threatening move, and you know, it was self defense. Ah. Uh, uh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But yes, she does step over to the computer and she is able to pull up the footage uh, taken. You know, uh, and you can, and Director Allen's name is uh, on the nameplate on the desk as well. So this is obviously his office. He's got his like PhDs up on the wall. Uh, when they start playing the uh, footage, though, yeah, he he may be a fully trained. He may have been a fully trained medical doctor, but the Hippocratic Oath was clearly not something he took too seriously. Uh, they appear to be operating on a uh, un not euthanized. That's entirely the wrong thing. Uh, They're operating on some of the anesthesia. Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, oh, God. Christ. Well, interestingly, really... interestingly, it's somebody that you saw in the trailer. Uh, and while the guy looked roughed up, he didn't look as bad as he looks in this video, so maybe they so were testing what... a healing ability or something? <laughs> but, uh... I feel kind of bad for not give them, giving them some aspirin. No, no. <laughs> Uh, I'm just thinking he's he's one of the guys that Seth asked if he liked it. <laughs> Jesus Christ! No, oh, no. <laughs> oh. uh, well, we didn't know. Look, hey, would you mind if we? Uh, would you mind if we take uh, some photos photos of these uh, physical files you found, just so we can have uh, copies for ourselves? Uh, Grim looked at, you know, he lo he looks at y'all. He looks at uh, Wraith. You friends? She's like for the moment. He just kind of shrugs. Sure thing, youngster. And he I'm walks over sure. one of the one of the desks and starts spreading some of the files out. These are some of the juicier ones right here. I assume y'all are gonna try to get the legal uh, legal system involved. Yes. Yeah, good we're, luck. With we're that. doing the the angle of. Showing that this place was doing illegal things. And, you know, if we find uh, information about other facilities that are doing this, we can just go ahead and bust them ourselves. Hey, yeah, ain't gonna argue with that. Hey, good. And so, I'll... I was a cop for years. I don't know how much good it's gonna do you if these people have money, but but hey, give it a try. Just take out, a, take out my phone and just, just start robotically... Taking photos, or anything, not even really reading it, reading them. Oh, you 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 talk about that though. Reminds me of a man I've I've got an old moment I had a month or two ago when I had COVID. <laughs> I had to I had to send in my positive test result for for work basically. He's like, oh yeah, well you, you know you can just send us a copy. It's like, oh, so I just need to scan it in and mail it to you, or scan it in, email it to you, or, or, or you could just take a picture with your phone. Oh yeah, phones can do that now. <laughs> you know, mine specifically when I take a picture, it basically asks if I just want to scan the words in. <laughs> or take a diaper to the, Oh yeah, that is something I can just do with something in my pocket now. Oh. That just sounds really nice. <laughs> Might need to get me that phone. Uh, but anyway, so. So y'all, y'all are doing that. You know, she's showing you evidence on the computer. Uh, their little gizmo is basically hacking in and copying it. Uh, so she can even give you a copy of the files they're getting. She's she's a okay with that. Oh yeah, ha uh, would very much like like that. You know, she you know like Grim. She doesn't have a lot of faith that the legal system will do much. But hey, if you're a team willing to go in and kick in the teeth when they need kicked in here. I have the information. We appreciate yeah. it. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Like still in the process of figuring out that we're one of the teams that are kicked deep in if we need to. Well, the MDM looks at superheroes as being a little soft. Uh, sure. But they are more than willing to work with them when, you know, when everybody's uh, motivations are lined up. <laughs> All right, so Transbuter and Seth walk in. As luck would have it, y'all walk the opposite direction that the rest of the guys walk, because, you know, they're, 
you're behind him. I need the two of you to give me awareness checks. Uh, which two? Uh, me and me transmuter and, and Seth. Okay. Let me open up my character sheet again. Set up an awareness test. For labeling purposes, and here we go. All right, you beat a seven. I did not. Uh, okay, that five is what you wrote. All right. So as you're passing this hallway, transmuter, uh, you hear some noise coming out of this office uh, right here. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and reveal the office. Yeah, let's check so, this out. Though the map is. Oops. It's currently empty. This never mind. Open. Never mind. That stray. Uh, that stray uh, skill test. I'm just try to. Okay. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I, I had selected the my character sheet, and I was trying to uh, move my mouse without moving the character sheet with it. There's my part of the Anyway, yes. But yes. So, uh, what did you uncover here? Was it number eleven or a different section that you uncovered? Uh, number five, right here. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'll, I'll carefully walk up to the doorway. Is it open? Uh, it's just cracked open a little bit. What dare I say is inside? Uh, you can hear people talking as you approach. Okay. Sir, we've we have uh, infiltrated the building. Uh, there are hostiles. Uh, test subjects have already been removed. Uh, do you want us to to, to, to yeah. do you want us to commence with the cleansing? Oh boy! Roger that, sir. And peeking in. Uh, you see four very tall, very buff, uh, I mean, like, like superhero brick buff, you know, kind of like Ox, but a little more human looking. Mm-hmm. And they're in kind of paramilitary gear, you know, flat jackets, helmets, uh, all in kind of an urban camo right now. Uh, mm -hmm. they are, you know. They're armed with some sort of heavy, heavy rifle, heavy looking rifles. Uh, definitely not any kind of standard issue stuff, not anything uh, uh, like the US, actual US military uses. And I'm assuming not standard uh, MDM issued urban camo. No, MDM are all kind of costume folk. But like, yeah, right, yeah, but individual costumes, not like this, right? Right, right, right. These guys, it doesn't look like costumes so much, it's, it's just looks like. Military, military gear, but you know, kind of generic, uh, not affiliated with any particular nation. Looking stuff. Gotcha. Uh, if I can, I would like to whisper on my comm link, and we do have comm links, right? Uh, yes. That there is a third party uh, paramilitary designation unknown in the east wing. Of, well, whatever the west, you know, that wing of the building. Like, yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah, you know. And uh, they're, they've uh, just gotten, and did they, uh, did I, could I tell if they had gotten uh, an affirmative for the question of uh, the cleansing? All right, sh should we proceed with the cleansing? Roger that, sir, is what you heard. Gotcha. You uh, could, you know, they're, about to... they're using, obviously using some kind of communist too, so you can't hear the responses they're getting. Sure. Uh, but I would say they're, they're about to commence with some kind of cleansing. Uh, can I get that word out before before it all before the initiative gets rolled? <laughs> and do they notice me? Perhaps is the more important question. You can get it out. Roll me a stealth throw to see if you manage to do this quietly enough not to be uh, spotted. Okay. 
and I, I assume that Seth's next to me so he can hear everything I'm talking about. Does he actually see what I'm talking about, or is he just hearing You'd it be me? the only one peeking through the door. Okay. And I take it this is a coordination test? Uh, yeah, stealth is usually coordination versus their awareness. And I don't have any stealthy things, so yeah, let's uh, go ahead and do this. Oh, boy. So six is the number to beat. I tied it. All right. So that is a marginal success. So one of the soldiers looks up. He looks at the door. Did any of you hear that? <laughs> Clearly he thinks he heard something, but he isn't sure about it. And the rest of the guys, I, mean, hmm, I didn't hear anything. Don't let your nerves get you. <laughs> Um, with that passing, I would turn to Seth, do kind of go on three. You know, I'll like silently say on three, and then, and uh, I guess Seth, do we do we even kind of one of those things where we are where we end up arguing over if it's on three or after three? <laughs> I hope we covered that in training. <laughs> y'all been training for a few weeks, so basics like this y'all should have down. It's on three, <laughs> unless somebody would like some trouble. <laughs> I mean, to well, care, I always. I thought we were counting down. <laughs> I always start, you know. I my default's always one determination. So in, in a way, I'm kind of always looking for trouble because <laughs> right. it's always nice to have that. Actually, it's always nice to have that backup determination. And, All right, then the two of you give yourselves uh, give yourselves a determination oh. point. Oh, we each got one. Oh, delightful. Uh, this is affecting both of you, so I'll let it. I'll let it be for both of you. Okay. <laughs> uh, and they they hear the argument and kick the door open. <laughs> uh, I've already rolled their initiatives, uh, and we can just continue using the initiatives y'all had rolled earlier. Uh, sure, which means they go first. Uh, so yeah, so top of the order is Siphon, but he's he is out. Ox is with him. I'm glad no one was around to see that. By the way, <laughs> did we hear it on our com links? Oh, that's a good point. You probably yes. do. <laughs> com links are open at the moment. <laughs> So you'd have heard a little bit of arguing, and then you'd have heard the door kick open, or kick get shattered. Uh, <laughs> uh, now the the what? soundproofing in this middle section of the uh, of the building is very good. So you hear it through your comm links. You don't hear anything outside the comm links. Uh, oh. Grim Noir and uh, Wraith don't don't look up from what they're doing. You know. Puppet will stop staring at Grim Noir and go, another a paramilitary group has just engaged our other two members. They're inside oh. the building and have commenced to something called a cleansing. Uh, Grim Noir and Wraith look at each other. They both straighten up and Wraith's like, I'll go. And, and Grim turns back and goes back to what he's doing. Like a well-oiled machine. Mm -hmm. Not like some teams out here. We're very well-oiled. <laughs> no one knows that we're not well-oiled. Uh, race light, where are they at in the building? East wing. Maybe, maybe we're just too oiled. <laughs> exactly. We're just super oily boys, you know? Uh, oh, God. <laughs> All that. It's all that. Why did you say it that way? <laughs> it's all that cocoa butter, you know? I got to... Makes a, make those packs listen. Well, you know, we're like we're like wrestlers. We oil each other up before we go out. <laughs> it's a respect thing, we swear. Yeah, that was week two of training. All right, so Wraith takes off. <laughs> week one was on three. Week two is oiling up. Uh, <laughs> as she's stepping out the we're door, going. you see her reach down to one of the down security guards. She touches him briefly. And you see him give a little, you know, you even you see him give a little shake, and then she takes off at super speed. Hmm. He's still breathing, but much, but shallower than he was. So she's a life force absorber, or something similar. Oh, that's great. Come on, Zach. You've encountered her before. You should know. 
It was only three I was years wondering, ago. I was one. Okay, I remembered um, Siphon. I remember Black uh, Grim Noir. I wasn't sure if I remembered Wraith. Or if we were just reusing the character. No, no, this is the exact same guy you ran into. And yeah, Wraith was... It was a three-man team, or a three-person team, when y'all ran into him. Ox is Right, right. Uh, so... So, yeah, she has basically spent her round. She has zipped over there. She is with uh, Transmuter and uh, Seth now. Then it is Transmuter's turn. Uh, let me move this guy. Uh, I'll go ahead and put him kind of half in the door here. He's the one that kicked the door out. In. Now, um, if I want to do, say, transform uh, like uh, everyone's weapons into... Uh, helium, because we do have a helium sort of shortage. Uh, would I be able to? Would I only be able to do one at a time, or would I need to like power stun to transform all four at the same time? Normally, you only one, be able, then... normally you'd only be able to do one at a time. If you wanted to power stun for like an area effect sort of thing, you could do that. Uh, uh, you know what? I've got I've got stuff on hand. I'll I'll just do I I'll just do one. Um, and then if uh, things get out of hand, then I maybe I can move to that but let me just uh now technically i don't think i actually for something like that's just a simple one element to another element trans transmutation i don't think i actually roll i think it just happens and my i believe if it's a held object i believe you have to make like an attack roll okay to to, sure. to, to hit it all right so would that be a coordination thing so yeah your coordination versus he is all right Super -doo. And I'm hoping that... Oh, no. Look at that. All right. So he got... So you got an eye and he got a 10. Okay. So he just sees you raising your hand to him and he, like, jumps out of the way. Ah, it's not... Finally home training, no doubt. Well, it's up to Seth to put the fear of, uh... Fear of the darkness into them. And the siphon beats us both. Oh, well, she just got here, so... All right, <clears throat> then it is the red trooper here. Uh, he comes out of the door saying something about little girls playing dress up. It's very condescending. Yeah. Very condescending. Mm -hmm. And that big fancy blaster thing, rifle of his, instead of shooting with it, he just he comes up with the butt of it, trying to smack you in the face with it. Ooh. Oh, that's rude. This is the prowess thing, isn't it? Yes, this is prowess. Or is this a power defense? Oh, well, I'll just do prowess. For you could use your power to defend against it if you wanted to. Yeah. I, You know, I have to admit, I'm a little... Yeah, I'll... I'm, I'm I'm wondering if yeah I'm wondering if that knack might I don't know I'll, we'll we'll hash it out later I wonder if that knack might be overpowered or not you know but anyway for now I'll just mm -hmm. we'll do uh, do this with a regular uh, prowess test. All right, so prowess test y'all tied, which means he makes contact, but okay. it's only half damage. Okay. Uh, his strength is an eight, wow. so you take four. Minus any defensive stuff you've got. I forget exactly what transmitters got. Uh, no defense, which is why I took uh, that power defense knack. I might need to start employing that, but for now. Uh, well, you know, well, we, said, get... we said you could have it. So as long as as long as it makes sense that you you know as long as you can think of a way for it to make sense, like you know, dissolving the the end of his rifle or turning it into rubber so it just kind of boinks off of you or something, you know, would be acceptable. You know, hardening the air in front of you. There's all kinds of stuff you could do. Yeah. Play. You know, that was well, like a uh, court. You know, I don't know if you remember, but like way back when, I did uh, pose a question about power defense, and Steve Kenson's made a statement that no, it actually counts against both. Because whether that was an outstanding question, whether it counted against ranged attacks or close-up attacks, and and Steve Kenson's response was that it counted with against both. 
Mm-hmm. But I know one, th- I, one thing I remember from power defense is I have to be aware of the attack. So if someone shot me from behind, I wouldn't be able to use power defense. Right, right. So, so maybe that alone would... make sense of him. Uh, but, but this guy is talking so, to yeah, you. Maybe I, swing, yeah. So, yeah, maybe, yeah. I mean, I, I could still take the hip, I think. Okay. But, if but I had deployed power defense, my role would have been uh, a 12 instead of an 8. So I don't know if you want to retroactively do that, or I just take the hit now and then just use power defense. We're still going to use these characters. Yeah, we, we, we'll, we'll just retro it so so you went ahead and used that. Uh, so okay. describe to me what you're doing. It would just hurt. Okay, so he swings the butt at me, and then I would basically, I think uh, I would have just, um, I think that what makes the most sense is that I would have just, like, temporarily hardened the space in front of me to, like, I don't know, like, even even if it was, like, uh, like a metal, and then it just, like, comes crashing to the ground after, as soon as that hits uh, okay. absorbed. So you put up, so like, I a chunk of like, lead or something in front of you, and he... He whacks it, knocks yeah. it off to the side, you know, in, into this neighboring wall, probably. Or, well, down the yeah, hallway. But that, that way I don't... Down the hallway. But. That way... Yeah, that way I don't get a free, like, you know, disrupt your weaponry at the same time sort of thing, because that would be... I feel like that would be yeah, true. That's fair. So, that's yeah, fair. I think that's what happens. Cool. He looks a little surprised. Let's see. Grim Noir is still doing what he's doing. Uh... I'll be right back. Uh, oh, he does tell Zach. Uh, Here, son, let me have your phone. I'll keep taking pictures while you're dealing with whatever that is. I hesitate for a minute, then I hand it to him. Yeah. And, and he just starts snapping pictures. Yeah, puppy goes, I'll stay with him, make sure everything's okay. Don't worry. All right. I mean, son, it's, it's, a, it's son, a I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to steal your phone. I mean, it's a burner phone. I don't have anything sensitive in there. It's, you know, work phone. And then he looks over at Puppet. I've been meaning to ask you, son. Are, are you feeling all right? <laughs> uh, I believe I have the world's worst immortality. Okay. You're not from New Orleans or anything? No, no. Okay. I've seen some stuff down there. I was just wondering. Uh, is Helios exit the room? Uh, On my not, turn? not his turn yet. Okay, yeah. All right, then it was... That was technically Noir's turn. Uh, then it is this guy back here. And he is going to fire at Transmuter. So, coordination. Mike's gotten quiet and very still. Are you still with us, Mike? Oh, no. And then he disappears from the Zoom, so no. Mm. We have lost the mic. He'll be back. Poor Mike. Uh, so we will we will move on, and whenever he gets back, we'll jump back and deal with that attack. Uh, now it's Puppet's turn. Uh, Puppet will hold action until after Helios. <laughs> All right, then it is this guy here. But he is going to take a shot at Seth, just because there are multiple targets. He moves out of the hallway to give himself some room. All right, Seth, he's shooting at you. Well, I at least got as good a dodge as I could get. Nine is the number to beat. You tied, so he hits you, but only for half damage. Uh, What does that put me at? There is a gout of flame. As clearly not a normal projectile, but it's not an energy weapon. Uh, Come shoot out, but it just does nick you. Uh, for twenty for, points of damage. For four points of damage. 
because the you know marginal success, so it only does half damage, so it does four damage oh, yeah. to you. Uh, and I don't remember if you've got any kind of defensive protection powers or not. not. Not only if I'm in shadow form, which I did not say that I was. So. Okay. Next up is Helios. I am going to take off full tilt down the hall. All right. You don't have any... Your movement powers are like leaping, correct? Uh, leaping, I also have super speed. Oh, you do have super speed. Yeah, you can yeah. definitely get out there then. Uh, how, many, well, how, how many ranks of it do you have? Izzy, please stop. <laughs> it's a uh, five. Goofball. Uh, yes, five would definitely eat you out there then. So yeah, you round the corner, so you see, you know, these two in the hallway. You can kind of tell what door they're coming out of because that guy's still kind of just right next to the door. Uh, and then... Then the last one of them comes out the door. Sees you and Wraith, steps back, pulls a grenade off of his belt, and chunks it down at you. Well, that's just rude. So this will be against you and Wraith. Would I be able to use Interpose to uh, take the full blast? If Just you like... wanted to, yes. You know, it it it's throw arcing in. It. It's you could throw yourself on, or the way it's arcing in, you could grab it and curl up around it. You know, catch it like a football, then kind of curl up around it to take the. Yeah, I'll do that. Blast. Probably something your training would have covered, truthfully. I'll just snag it out of the air and, uh... Okay. Uh, it explodes. It does four points of damage. I figure you... I don't figure that's going to hurt you any. I don't even feel it. Yeah. It Best you could tell as you were catching it, it looked like just a regular old grenade, modern-day military grenade, not, not any kind of weird super tech. Uh, you know, we'll step you kind of in front of her. Wraith just kind of looks at you. Oh, thanks. I think I'd have been all right, but thanks. Not a problem. It's always safe to be, uh, play it safe whenever you're fighting with someone. I just dust my hands and, sh and show them to the guy who tossed the grenade. Got anything bigger? He nods. Yeah. And then we move to Seth's turn. Uh do not like the way they tried to manhandle my sister, nor do I like the way I was shot with flame. Um, so I am going to put the fear of darkness in them. And be like, man, man, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't touch sis like that. And I guess, uh, it should only be one target, but I'm going to burn that determination you gave me if you'll allow to uh, do multiple targets. All right. What uh, aspect are... Uh... They're not aspects in this game. So... Don't make me mad. I'm the god to fuck you up, man. Special... No, not special. What am I looking for? Quality. That's what I'm gonna... That sounds like a perfectly reasonable one to use. So you're basically slapping the uh, area effect extra on it. And this is your emotion control, correct? Yes, yes. All right. And they resist that with willpower? No, they resist that with awareness, don't they? Yes, they do. They resist it with... Because um... it's kind of all about them realizing somebody's messing with them. As opposed to like willpower, like a mind control would be. All right. We will start with this front guy. Yeah, 
And 10 is the number for them all to beat. He rolled a 4. So you beat him by 6. That's a massive. Then this one back here. 8. You beat him with a moderate. Then this one back here. You beat him with a major. Uh, not sure it would have gotten this guy back here. The one that's still in the room and... Uh, his if I get three, I'm happy. Has he not acted yet? Oh, he did. He That's right. He, he acted, but he shot, so he didn't actually move any closer, so yeah. Now let me look up uh, the emotion control. All right. Oh yeah, there were two definitions of it because in great power it was different from. Places the emotional quality on the target. Concentrate and make a new emotion control versus awareness to start each each page to maintain it. You can place a single emotional quality on the target one at a time. One of the target's other qualities may be activated to recover. Yeah, this one is like they would put, like, like I would put terrified on them. With a moderate or better, you put the quality on them. The two moderates will stay on for a round, and then you re-roll. You know, as long as you're concentrating, you re you remake the roll against them. The major, the major and massive success. Uh, the major puts it on them until the until level duration. So whatever, what what level is your emotion control? Seven. So that's going to be on him for seven rounds. And the other one is on the, the guy you got a massive on. It's on him until uh, the end of the chapter. Uh, and I forget exactly which was which. So we're going to put the little screaming man on them because they are near scarred. And I will mark this guy with a seven so I know it's seven rounds. I will mark him with a C so I know it goes to the end of the chapter. And basically, that is a quality on them that you can now, y'all can now tap to spend a termination against them. Uh, I'm going to say that you can tap it. Does it say? It doesn't say you can tap it for free. But it's it's something available for y'all to tap. Uh, and of course they'll both be acting in appropriate fashion for somebody that's scared back to the top of the order siphon Ooh, my three boots taking a little while poor guy be right back I, I'll be back much quicker than Mike <laughs> well then we can have my held action now oh that's right you did hold an action before it'll we... take the appropriate amount of time to have a nice conversation all right, what do you want? To, what do you? What do you? How are you wanting to conversate with uh, Grim Noir? So I'm just a bit of medical curiosity. I'm assuming you are also a mutant. 
Yeah, it's pretty much a requirement for the MDM. Huh. That, all right, noted. Um, that means the possibility of powers being passed down to children, correct? Sure. I mean, I've, I've, I've certainly heard of some mutants that, it run, you know, the power their power runs in their family or something. I just have, or had, some connections to someone who went to a facility that had someone of similar powers of yours. So I've been told about shadow travel. It seemed very interesting when I first heard about it. Well, your friend, uh, from the news reports, your friend does shadow stuff too. It, it's, I won't say it's a common power, but there's a few of us around. Ah, uh, but he's the only one that matters. Sorry, you weren't there to hear him say that. He was trying to intimidate your ox friend. It didn't go well. Oh, uh, I can imagine. That might have been a little subtle for ox. And this whole time, he's still pulling out papers, snapping photos. Yeah, I was just, uh, on Super Senses, did he seem to tense up or weird out for me? Give me an awareness roll. Of... Uh, can I put my ad to the two from Super Senses onto it? Yeah, that sounds fair. <laughs> I just realized, I remember what I put my awareness as. <laughs> what is your awareness? That's a seven. My awareness is a one. Oh, I'm, try I'm trying to. Be, uh, Jason, I'm trying to I, I, I forgot if you'll allow it. Um, when I did my shadow fear thing, mm -hmm. I would also like to turn to shadow form. If you'll yeah, yeah, that's fine. That that you know that takes uh, your reaction or something. I forget. I don't know that switching to shadow form does. Oh, okay, well, it may not. Uh, but you can definitely have shifted if you wanted to. Uh, and then let me roll. roll. I don't have to pull up the dice roll. I've got Grimm's, stat, Grimm's uh, sheet over here. All right, so this would be Grimm's awareness to, to resist. I'm going to say his awareness just because it's a... Oh, but he got a six. That's a pretty pass. So, no, you're not... You don't pick up on necessarily any tension from him when he did, when, when you say that to him. Okay. Uh, all right. And then we're back to Wraith. She is going to run up there. Uh, and she's going to try to touch him for to use her energy drain, which is her prowess, which is not great, actually. And his prowess... To avoid being touched, because he's a little freaked out, he doesn't want people touching him. Don't touch me. Oh yeah, he easily avoids her. She may not have had a whole lot of hand-to-hand -hand training. This guy clearly has. Transmuter. Oh, that's right. Mike is still. Uh, we've still got the the combat from the shot from last round unresolved. Uh, so we will skip transmuter and the red guy again. At least I think it was the red guy. I forget. No, the red guy's over there and gone after Seth. Uh. He is going to fall back well away from Seth now. Because he's a little afraid of him. But he is going to be shooting at Seth while he backs up. 
I'm back on Discord at least. Ah, excellent. Welcome back. And I'm opening up soon. Sorry, I just had like a full reboot. Yeah, it happens. All right. Mm. So, so last round, somebody shot at you. Oh. Uh. Had I made the roll? Any of y'all remember if I had made the roll? I don't think you did, but... Okay. Then we shall roll. Don't ever trust Curtis. <laughs> he doesn't lie. He just doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. He doesn't lie. He just misremembers or doesn't remember. <laughs> Alright, so five is the number you need to beat. And he's just firing that gun at you. Okay, I'm logging into roll 20. And zoom simultaneously. Okay, let's see. What, it, what has Mike missed? One of the guys threw a grenade uh, at Helios and Wraith, who had come running up at super speed behind y'all. Uh, Helios caught the grenade football style and just curled up around it, so it went off and didn't damage anybody. Uh, Seth made everybody afraid. Ooh, which really going area effect. Should that have affected the siblings? Sure, I would say that's up to you, especially since it's uncontrollable. We won't worry about it this time, on. but we'll think about it next yeah. time. Almost there. Miss Bam, did you seriously move your, your snacks from one cup to another cup? Was the first cup not sufficiently cuppy for you? The color was wrong. It was, a, it was messing <laughs> with the feng shui. Exactly. Are the cups so the same color? Uh, yes, they're both green. <laughs> One's just slightly... Oh, she actually moved it to a shorter cup. Okay. Right, what are you so I'm rolling, oh, I'm rolling power defense, right? If that's how you want to block this incoming shot, sure. Yes, uh, okay. I just rolled a 10 for that. All right. So, and, the, and these weapons are firing some sort of rocket. It's like small rocket propel somethings. Oh, okay. So they're weird, but they are physical, so you could just transmute them into oxygen or something. Yeah. I just generated a 10 for that. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, uh... The bullet streaks towards you and then turns into something harmless. Ooh. I remember a transmuter out of the uh, some of the Ultraverse comics. Something went off and he got hit by a bunch of shrapnel, but every time the shrapnel would touch him, it would turn into a rose petal and drift to the ground. <laughs> uh, and then we had gotten back around to your turn, so it is transmuter's turn now. Ah, great. So, um... <clears throat> and these three guys directly in front of you, with the little screaming men in their corners, yes. they all have the terrified quality on them that you could tap if you needed to. Oh, okay. Sure. Let me, um... Yeah, let me see if I could, uh... Try, um... Uh, disarming one of them again. Okay. And and yeah, maybe I'll go ahead and tag uh, that terrified quality to give myself a plus two to the roll because that's really all I need as far as. Uh, so let's. Uh, I guess I'll just. Uh, you said it's coordination, right? Correct. Let's see where we get there. All right, let's see what happens here. Oh, well, it's uh, I should have entered it manually. It's actually a plus. Uh, it's an eight, including the plus two for the for the okay. terrified uh, tap. So, so we you, you, okay. and they got a six. You got an eight. So that beats them. So pick pick whichever target you want. And yeah, his his weaponry disappears. Uh, the one that's uh, just diagonal from me. All right. Yeah. So he is disarmed. A 
I'll put the little fist on him so I know he's got to go at you hand to hand. Uh, then it is the red guy here. And he was backing up to take a shot at somebody. Uh, oh, he was shooting at Seth because Seth is the one that scared him. Uh, so he's got a 10 to hit Seth. I am going to tap his fear to give me an advantage. Okay. To dodge. Six plus. Does that give me a plus two, right? Yes. Using the so it'll make it plus five. Yeah, it's plus one if you're adding it to like damage or something, but it's plus two for the effort. Yeah. But he still hits. Okay. Does your so shadow form crafting. give you any defensive protection? It does. I have uh, four damage resistance in shadow form. Okay. The these little rock repel bullets they do eight damage so you take Oof. you take four. That puts oh, yeah. me down. How much health do you have? Eight. Oh, had they hit you before? Yeah, like they hit me for half once before. Okay. So I'll maybe use my last determination to. For a second win okay. next round. That'll be fine. Is your shadow form concentration? That's a good question. I'll let you look that up while we move on. I bet it's not. I mean, I mean, I mean I'm sorry. I bet it is. But we'll All right, so Grim the, other question, the other question is the fear. Is that concentration too? If I go down, are they all... Not... All right. The one guy that's only afraid for one round, you have you had to to re up it to keep it going. Right, right, right. So if you're unconscious, you won't be able to do that. Uh, the other two, no. One of them's scared for seven rounds. One of them is scared to the end of the, until the end of the encounter. Okay. Just kind of period. Uh, I mean, seven rounds would probably be the end of the encounter, practically speaking. But... All right, Grim Noir's turn comes up. He's doing what he does. The soldier inside here. Uh, comes running out. Uh, and he, as he as he's running out, he lets go of his gun. It's on a sling, so it doesn't like go drop him to the ground. And he just runs up and tries to slug uh, transmuter. Just good old fashioned fisticuffs. From, you know, these big burly, clearly super strong guys. So that is an eight to punch you. A fifteen on your power defense. So does like a column of stone appear or um I would say it might trans- just be, go ahead. It it might might be like actually like just like some kind of foam that just like slows down his, his uh the force of his um his punch to nothing. And then big, just like check. It's like a big slab of super memory foam <laughs> appears between you. Yeah, two. exactly. <laughs> Interesting. And he, he's like, "What the crap?" And pulls, kind of pulls his hand back from the stuff, and then it just kind of on the floor. Right. Or maybe it just transmutes for an instant, so it, it appears, it does the thing, and then dissipates. Who knows? It's up to up to you, up to you. Yeah, it'll be uh, the, uh, the smaller but the print, the better. I, I suspect, but, uh, since this is strictly a defense thing. All right, puppet.
All right. Do you I still... think there's enough evidence collected? Uh, you know, last round, the, the, the device they had plugged in that computer beeped and seems to have stopped doing anything. And, and Grim Noir had kind of looked at, kind of, you know, he, he kind of glanced over at me and made that noise and then kind of nodded, nodded to himself and went back to what he was doing. I guess I'll just continue to be here then. All right. In that case, Noir tells you, you know, uh, see if he's got a flash drive in his desk. You can make a, you, can, you can plug it into the machine and make a copy of what the machine got. All right, thanks, sir. And I'll start looking for a USB drive. Okay, and he's got several of them on the desk. So, yeah. so with just a little bit of computer, and yeah, you can you can make a copy of what they got out of the computer. I don't know if Puppet has pockets, but you know. Maybe he just has to carry it. I'm wearing pants. <laughs> so Women wear funny. pants. They don't always have pockets, though. That's superhero, because they chose superhero to buy pants. pants that don't have pockets. I'm not here for fashion. I'm here for utility. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, then we have another one of these guys. He is going to shoot. Two of his buddies are engaging transmuter. He just saw. Oh. Uh -oh. Are you with us, Mike? Uh, on Discord, I am. Sorry. Okay. okay. Oh, I'm about to join back on the Zoom. I just saw. I just saw your face disappear. Like, oh no. Yeah, but as long as you're still with us. Fortunately, Discord, yeah, Discord seems to be uh, more stable than uh, than Zoom. It's the general consensus I get from people. Still better than Skype. <laughs> I have never used Skype in my life, so I'll take your word for it. Uh, Not good at group chats. All right, so this guy is going to shoot at Helios because he just saw Helios take a grenade. So, eight to shoot Helios. And I'll take the defense action. Use my sh strength to block that. All right. <clears throat> now, blocking. All right, so the way blocking works, blasting... All right, blocking is normally only effective against bashing, blasting, and rushing attacks. All right, so this is a shooting. Uh, but yeah, I'm good with it. All right, so you got eleven. That beats his eight. Uh, you can describe this any way you want to. Though, the, the, the way that I initially envisioned it is, he goes to take a shot, and and I'm picturing Helios basically clapping his hands and catching the bullet. Basically, yeah, what I was thinking. You know, just yeah. catching the bullets. You're kind of pinning it on either side, so it's not having a chance to like penetrate anything. Uh, kind of like if somebody stabs you with a sword, you do the, the clap to catch. Yeah. I'd rather get some nicks on my hand than, you know, mm -hmm. that that might go into something vital. Oh, this guy was already freaked out. Uh... Oh, now it's Helios' turn. Okay, so which one shot Seth? I believe it was the red one back here. I'm going to... Zoom around at him, screaming my head off, 
and just l absolutely lay into him. I'm going to be tapping uh, his fe his afraid quality okay. for uh, the hit. All right. He is. Let's see. He was only for the. Let's see. Seth's going to have to re up to keep him afraid this round, but it has not been Seth's turn yet. So yes, he is still he is still terrified. And I'm also going to tap dysfunctional bundle of issue of easily exploited issues to <laughs> up my damage. You exploit your own issues. How about that? Yeah. All right, ten's the number to beat. I guess as long as it's self exploitation, that's <laughs> okay. Now, were you tapping that and the fear to make contact? I was tapping the fear to make contact, and the dysfunctional bundle of easily exploited issues to do damage. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so that was... Let's see, they got a five. I Ooh, it's this, a tie. Ooh. I think this team has a lot of issues. Yeah. Alright, so you're doing half damage. So what is your strength? Alright, so that would be a four. Now, are you still tapping the... Because technically you would declare, I think, to tap for the damage. Would you do that right before the damage? No, you do that before you hit. You're right. You'd have done it in that order. So so half damage is four plus two? Or no, plus one. Cause... Uh, plus one. Yeah. Plus no, no, four. Uh... Actually, my base strength is a seven, so it would... half of that would be 3.5, so it would round up to four, right? I was thinking you always rounded down in this. Okay, so let's just say round down to be safe. So, yeah, it'll, it'll be four. Okay, so four points of damage to him. He has got some damage resistance. All right. He takes a little damage. Not a whole lot. He, he's clearly tough, but, but you have hurt him. All right, so that was Helios. Next up is this guy who's terrified. He has no weapons. You hear him call out to call out to his uh, fellow, you know, fellow mercs, soldiers, whatever they are. His team, his squad. Uh, handle these interlopers. I'm going to commence with the mission. And then he sinks through the ground. Hmm. Like that. And then he moves, but you know. Well, y'all might as well see his miniature. Y'all wouldn't know where he was moving. Seth. Okay. My apologies. When I built Seth, I totally misunderstood how Shadow Form works. I screwed it up. Seth, Shadow Form, I'm actually supposed to be... I gain immunity to all physical attacks, except light, which also... And this is only per great power, okay. not the assembled edition gotcha, gotcha. that I was reading. Um Except light, which of course gains a stunning quality, and I'm not immune to that. Um, so, with your permission, I'm going to change my damage resistance, and I'm not going to limit it to when I'm in shadow form because that's silly. I'm just going to drop a point of it so that there's not a limitation. Um, the the I have trouble picturing him actually having damage resistance, but we'll just say he's protected by shadows or something. Okay. Or just physically um, a little tougher than normal. You know, there's all kinds of... Yeah. I, um... 
but I will go ahead and use my last available determination to for a second win. Okay. So pick the higher highest of your strength or your wisdom and get that much back. Or strength or willpower, right? It's gonna give me five. And and it does take a full turn to um, go into shadow form. Okay. It doesn't say anything about if I'm knocked unconscious. I can instantly turn back human, but it doesn't say anything about requiring willpower to maintain it. It does. It's not listed as concentration. No. Okay. Well, then presumably you would just stay in shadow form until you woke up and decided to change back. Uh, and so the guy that sh shot at me, is he still up? He is up. He's in the back of this row right here. Uh, Helios has just took a swing at him. Now, he will stop being afraid this round if you do not uh, re-up the fear. Uh, it's concentration. This is not taking one of your actions. You just have to make another roll against him to maintain the fear. Okay, well, I'll do that. All right. His awareness is... Average. So you beat him by two again. So, again, he's afraid for this round. You'll have to re-up it next round. If, he, if he's still conscious. Is he close enough for me to make a strike? He is close enough that you could walk over to him and make a strike. Okay. Yeah, I'd be like... I told you to be afraid, and I am going to tap the... The his terrified... Qu his terrified yeah. quality? Yeah. To give me a bonus. Okay, so that's plus two. Let's... Six plus my prowess plus the bonus. I just want to make sure I hit him. Chances are good. Uh, let's see, what's his prowess? Four or five. His prowess is a five. You beat him by five, so that's a massive success. And what exactly strike? are you hit? What are you hitting him with? My shadow strike. Okay. It's it's a it's a strike. Power uh, does slashing damage. Does it do power level damage? I've never had strike before. Yeah, strike does power level. That's what I uh, thought. So that'll do eight. Okay, that's definitely gonna put a put a hurt on him. All right, so that is eight points. Minus his damage reduction. Yeah, you tear into him pretty good. He is not looking great. You got a massive success, so that triggers a potential kill outcome. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. So roll me a d6 plus the full damage you do, which I think you said was 8. So give me a d6 plus 8 versus the target's strength. His strength is also an 8, so it's an even roll-off. He Ooh, but he got a 9. He got as low as he could. And Curtis got a one, rolled a 1, which makes it a 9. So he got the roll. Both of us got the roll lowest we possibly could. So that is a failure or marginal success. Means no effect other than the attacker stamina the damage. So, he do He's not lucky. fall down dying or anything. He's lucky. Yep, because a moderate would have knocked him, would have basically knocked him out. And a major or a massive would have put him, uh, 
unconscious and he started losing strength levels, you know, until somebody doctored him up or he died. Uh, but yeah, you injured him pretty heavily. Uh, then it's Siphon and Ox, but they're driving away. Uh, Wraith is going to step up to this guy right in front of Transmuter. Uh, let's see. And what power does she want to use? <sighs> She's having a hard time uh, touching him. So she's going to use her stun this time. Her coordination versus his coordination. All right, that's a major. So that got through. And with stun, is there a second roll with stun, or does it just take effect if it hits? Let me look. Stunning. Coordination versus coordination. The target, let's see. Yeah, roll power level versus target strength or willpower. Chosen with the power. Seven versus his willpower of a four. And she beats him by six. He is unconscious. I'm going to go ahead and leave him on the map. Just so we know there's an unconscious guy there. Doesn't block the square or anything if y'all want to move through there. And then we are back to transmuter. Alright. I'd like to do uh, pull off a power spin here. We've got a soldier who has disappeared into the ground to continue this uh, presumably to continue this cleansing thing that we learned about. I would like to transform the entire, like basically as much of facility that's beneath us into a translucent material so that we can see where the soldier is, hopefully. So I it occurs to me that's basically simulating the X-ray vision power, except it would work for everyone, not just me. So that's kind of like a two level power stunt. Um well does that sound you're trans uh -huh. if you were transmuting it into like glass or something? Yes. Or transparent aluminum or which is basically sapphire, I think. Uh, oh, okay. You know, it's not, you know, you could describe it as a curved vision, but it's really just you're making something clear. Yeah. So it's really just the use of your transmutation power. And you've got eight rakes of that, so you can transmute a lot of stuff, can't you? Nine, in fact. So, yeah, basically, oh, I, I could do the whole build. I could basically do the whole building if I wanted. That actually sounds very pretty. <laughs> you know, we wanted to add transparency to this illegal operation, so I decided to do it literally. I'm, pit I'm picturing the kids from Full Metal, Out Full Metal Alchemist when they'd like clap their hands and then jab their hands down on the ground. I'm just kind of picturing her. Yeah, something like basically. And they just yeah. slap both hands on the ground and everything's glass. So, yeah, so however you think that would work rules wise, I'll spend or roll whatever I need to. Roll your transmutation. Uh. Or actually, that's actually something we discussed when it's it, an object nobody's touching. You may not even have to roll. You know, it takes your action, but it's not like yeah, the it seems can to, resist. Yeah, it seems to be what, um, from what I've read of the power, uh, that basically just works. Um, 
Let's see. Level your so, power within the weight column. Yeah, it's a weight you can pick up at nine. You can pick a mountain, so potentially. Uh, you may too may. You may need to make a coordination test to touch a moving handheld object. Uh, as an extra, you can transmute targets at range at extended range. So. Uh, Yeah, you know, the building is not made out of any particularly funky materials. You know, like if you were trying to transmute the knockoff of adamantium or something, I might I have yeah, to exactly. a power roll for that. Sure. Uh, so yeah, the building the, the building is uh or at least the floor is glass. Yeah, that's, the walls being made of a different material, the doors are a different material just kind of screwed together. It's up in the air. Uh. Oh, that's true too. If, if there's any, yeah, basically, if um, yeah, at least the floor. If that's not enough, I, I would just basically keep pouring it on until we spot the soldier. Yeah. And... Well, but if, but if you walk up and touch the car, you could transmute the entire car, and it's a bunch of different pieces bolted together. So yeah. Oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. So yeah, we'll yeah. say we'll say the floors and the walls and the roof all turned to glass, or sapphire, something translucent, whatever it is. Sure. Uh, You might go with the the sapphire because, like I said, it's it's chemically it's ba sapphires are basically transparent aluminum. Sapphire it is. Uh, but and that would probably still be strong enough to to stay upright. Yeah, the entire that, building that, made of glass might start cracking. That would be important. Uh, but like the office doors and stuff, some of those may still you know be whatever material they are since they're, since they're made out of something different. Uh. But yeah, if you look around, you can basically see where this guy, he dropped beneath the floor and then just sort of hidden straight across. Yeah, does it look like he's phasing or is he digging? Can, is it, am I able to tell? The material in front of him seems to be opening up and then closing back oh. behind him. Uh, he might be a transmitter himself. Uh, it, there's some kind of power that's letting him like tunnel. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll point out his, his location and maybe someone else can actually pick up the pursuit. Uh, Red back here is like, what the crap? <laughs> Uh, and you just hear him just yell, nah, this is, this is too much. Uh, and you see him just kind of slap his, slap his, some communication gear or something. Nah, huh. this situation's foobar. We're bugging out. And then he takes his action to sink below the floor. And basically just heads out this way. Uh, back over in this lab here, Grim Noir is like, what in tarnation when the whole <laughs> floor and the walls? And now it's a whole lot brighter. He's like, oh, this is going to make me get out a lot harder. No. Oh. <laughs> I got to remember that with all, with all the shadow beings we've encountered. Uh, I, you could probably just dive into this, Seth. He generates shadows. <laughs> right. I mean, hopefully you're not uncomfortable diving into another man's arms to escape. <laughs> Seth might be uncomfortable. He's a, hold me. Uh. <laughs> you know, I just need shadows. I guess if he's generating them, it would work. I mean, we're probably tapping into the same realm anyway. Right. When we eventually have our season five uh, Shadow War arc. Hey, they did that in New Warriors one time. That's right. I remember. Everybody that used the Dark Force dimension. And everybody's looking at Dark Hawk funny. He's like, look, I call this a Dark Force blast. Apparently it wasn't. <laughs> uh, 
All right. Grimnor has stopped going through the files now, and he's basically stacking up all the files that he would gathered and, you know, uh, organizing them in a fashion that he can carry with him. And then he steps out of the office and goes, hey, let's go find your buddy. Sounds good. And then as he steps out in the hallway, he's like, hey, is that one of them guys getting away? But he's pointing, like, up under the glass. <laughs> All right, and then it's the unconscious soldier who isn't doing anything, and then it's Puppet. I'm carrying things. There's no one to punch. I'm just having a good trip with my friend Grim. Oh, Grim would also have carried, grabbed that device. Uh, but he had finished making the copy, so you've got the flash drive. Yeah. And like I said, he'd have handed you your brother's phone. Great. Everything's going great for me today. I ain't been shot at once. <laughs> Everything's coming up, puppet. <laughs> the hand behind the strings is merciful this day. Until, until the cliffhanger ending. Nah. <laughs> uh, well, you know, after the way the last fight started up, I thought these soldier guys were going to give y'all a little rougher time than they had. Uh, so this one here, you know, when he hears the command to bug out, he just dives forward like he's diving on top of his buddy. But when he hits his buddy, they both sink to the ground. <laughs> and then he starts carrying his buddy out this way. Being able to put that quality that we can all tap is useful. Mm-hmm. Uh, Unless we're doing it wrong. Well, it occurs to me that it could just be that you put it on there and then it's something you can tap to spend your points. But that doesn't seem very useful for a power. Right. Because there's plenty of ways you can tap stuff kind of anyway. So I think the way, I think I like how we're doing it today better regardless of whether it's right or not. It at least makes, <laughs> it makes the emotion controls a little more useful. Uh... Helios. So the first one who dived down through here, he said he was going on his way to uh, continue the mission, or was he trying to escape? Well, he was standing right here, and he was the most terrified. But he did. But he was, because he told his buddies, hey, y'all handle this, basically. I'm going to go finish the mission. So he did say something about finishing the mission. Though you can well, tell the by watching that his, buddy, that his rest of his buddies are just bugging out. All right. Okay, I thought it was the same guy who also said this whole thing's foobar. I thought he was the first to escape, unless I misread that. No, that was the no. second one. Yeah, the red no. back here was the guy that said everything's foobar, bug out. Okay. Because, you know, the first guy ran, then y'all knocked one of the guys out. And then the guy With in red the... was already, is already badly injured. Can I still see him uh, through the uh, ground? And if so, will rank five flight let me get to him in one one move? All right, red here. Well, I can't skip the map over far enough for the viewers to see it. But the one you punched, no, he is in the dirt. You cannot see him through the dirt. The guy that grabbed his buddy, he is right at the edge of where the glass is and the dirt starts. So you could try to smash through the ground and get to him. Oh no, I meant uh, the the first one that went down through here. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Uh, you would spot him over here, basically standing under where Puppet is standing. Ah. Uh, how how fast can you fly? Uh, rank five, which is yeah, so that's a helicopter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Everybody's <laughs> favorite. Eat, eat it, it's back. <laughs> All right. Well, but uh, distance I... wise, yeah, you could zip by and basically be like, "Excuse me," as you dive through the floor between Grim and. <laughs> I would like to use the rushing action to tackle him. All right. And what is your strength? Uh, strength seven. And uh, the rush will give me a plus one to that. So I'll be hitting him with eight straight. All right. Let me look at the benchmarks. Aluminum is a four. Material strength. 
Okay. Okay, I'm gonna give him a plus two to his rolls because you have all that material you have to smash to the get to him. That's you know. That's totally. That is fair. gonna add. That's gonna aid him in some ways. All right, so this is a rushing attack, which I should have mm -hmm. memorized because the last time I played a character, he did that all the time. Aww. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Actions. New brought rushing. Yeah, does damage equal to the highest of your strength or your movement plus one. And it is. All right, it's prowess versus uh, the defender uses his prowess or his coordination, whichever he prefers. Uh, this guy's prowess is, is one better, so he'll go with his prowess. All right. So he's got a five plus two bonus for the material. So, ooh, he got a 12. Ooh, damn. Oof. Uh, all right, so you got a seven. So that is a failure. Oh wait, no, I got a five. I shouldn't. I forgot to d deduct my uh, boxing bonus from that. So, so it's an even bigger failure. <laughs> You know, I thought there was something about rushing where you took damage if you flubbed it, but it's not in here, so I guess uh, I'm thinking of some other game. Maybe, oh, uh, marginal, you strike a glancing blow, and you both take half damage. Ah! Oh, no, dealing your damage half damage. I think this is a little bit more than a marginal failure. But uh, but yeah, you, you smash through the glass. The big cloud of dirt goes up because he managed to get just a little bit further ahead of you as his stuff closes up behind him. You basically smash through the uh, translucent substance and into the dirt. <laughs> you leave a nice big divot in the dirt and dirt goes up mm -hmm. everywhere. Uh, Noir kind of steps back and pulls his hat down over his face. <laughs> <laughs> and he's waving his hat, trying to wave the dust away with his hat. <laughs> but hey, it was a good effort. <laughs> and then he's kind of standing over the pit. You all right down there, son? Yep, just feel like a little bit, a little bit of a jackass. Uh, you know if this place has a reactor or anything that might blow up? I don't think so. I mean, it's got it's got like a diesel generator for backup power. Mm. At least according to our schematic. Well, if Buddy's booked it, he said something about going to finish the mission. So. What was his mission? Something cleansing. Oh, that's probably just killing everybody here in the facility so nobody can squeal. Probably something you hero. Probably something a hero type, a nice hero gentleman like yourself would want to stop. <laughs> Good luck with that. And he puts his hat on and keeps playing walks over. <laughs> but uh, from where you're standing, you can see where he just keeps going. We're kind of out of initiative order at this point, but uh. So technically, before that guy, uh, let's see, was it before him or would it have been after him? Uh, Seth, is there anything, Seth or Transmuter for that matter, is there anything y'all want to try with this guy before he manages to get away? 
Um, oh, yeah, let's... Um, I don't know if I could possibly... Would I, I'd like to... Uh, would I be able to... I don't know, try to co uh, cocoon him in some, in, uh, in some like, some kind of, uh, some kind of metal element to, well, no, they just, they, they just use their power. Yeah, I'm not sure what I could do to neutralize whatever power they have to move, maneuver this material in the first place. Unless I tried the knockout gas trick. But I would have to, <coughs> start, yeah, no, actually that wouldn't work because I could only, you know, start that that plume of knockout gas for me towards the target, and, it'll, and it's the a solid gas. substance between you. Yeah, I don't think I've got any way to reach him. Do I? Yeah, you may not. I mean, I was, I was just asking if anybody want to take a shot before they get away. Yeah, I um, I can try to bust through the the uh, aluminum glass floor with my strike and see if I land on top of him, but I don't know how well that's. That sounds like a pretty harebrained hair brain <laughs> plan. Not that I'm opposed to that. Uh, you could do it by the time you if you, by the time you take an action to slash through it, he'll get his action to be into the dirt. Yeah, and once he's in the dirt, I you know. I mean, he's he's right there at the edge, so they were you know. It was just in case somebody had something that could reach through the material, was what I was asking. <laughs> I'll just get on the floor. <laughs> I'm picturing him like a little kid pressing his face up against the glass, sticking his tongue out. Hey, hey, hey. Except he's in shadow form, so I'm not sure you'd be able to tell that his tongue was out. True. Uh, all right, so Helios and Puppet see this guy kind of keep walking. And arcs up like he's going to some of those offices. Y'all know y'all heard whimpering out of some of those offices. Yeah. That's right. Uh, Grim Noir walks in. You know, he walks past Transmuter. Man, uh, looks like y'all handle business over here. Uh, One of them got away again. That's the way it goes a lot of times. But we got the information. Right, we're good to go. Uh, the boys back there. Uh, I've got a copy of the information. He holds out his hand. She takes it. Uh, and since Seth is in the shadow form, he just walks up to Seth. Excuse me, son. And then he just walks into you. And drags <laughs> Wraith and, and, and drags Wraith with you. And teleports, right? <clears throat> yep, he can travel. He can travel into the. Sh he can shadow travel yeah, sh travel into the shadow plane. And it, basically, how he like, teleports, he shadow steps. I feel violated. <laughs> yeah. I mean that's fair. You hear a little echoey voice from inside the shadow. I do apologize, but the transparent uh, walls made made shadows. In, uh, you know, you're the only convenient shadow I could find. My apologies. <laughs> and then, then just said you get a sensation of them getting further and further away from you. Gotcha. It's you know. Clearly, he's doing something with Shadow that he that you don't that know I, how to do. I, I do. Yeah, but it feels like something you could learn to do, maybe. With enough points. <laughs> if y'all remember to spend them this time, <laughs> right? right? You're one of the few groups I've got that have trouble remembering to spend their points. <laughs> I so... choose the group I have to remind them every now and then. Except in the Star Wars game. In the Star Wars game, they're always wanting more skills. So. Well, this is the kind of game where your character fresh out of the box works and keeps working. Yeah. That's true. Um, so, unless I misunderstood what Jason was trying to tell us, <laughs> you guys saw that the others were after some survivors... in the office to finish them off and finish the cleansing. Mm -hmm. Because we heard whimpering. Oh. Or you guys heard whimpering. Um, yeah, Seth and Transmuter would not have heard this because they went the other way. We, we did not hear it because we went the other way. But I'm just saying as a player, not as Seth, that we, we're not done here yet. 
Yeah. That's right. Yeah, we haven't investigated the whimpering yet. Well, and those the the other people are after the whimper. Oh yes, and with the transparent the walls, point. you can see that there are people in lab coats uh, in these two rooms. Well, some of them are in lab coats, some of them are in, in janitorial gear. There's one guy in security gear. They've got the doors barricaded, like all the furniture is pushed up against the door. Okay, so they're basically take they they've taken shelter. And this guy is basically walking up, you know, like he's about to walk up under the wall into you know to the floor under them. Uh, they also seem to be freaking out about the fact that everything's clear now. And they're like pointing down at the guy walking up under the couple of them are trying to are trying to push some of the furniture away from the door so they can open the door and get out. Uh, so what are you two doing? Because you have the least stuff between you, so you'd have the clearest view of this. Uh, I'm just going to barrel through the wall, like, probably right about here, so I don't just shower them in glass. Okay. Get out, hallway, now! <laughs> They're pushing stuff out of the... And then they realize, oh, he's made a big hole in the wall. They they start streaming out that hole. Uh, this guy steps up under you, but he sees you standing up in the room. Uh, and you, you, you're pretty sure you're going to read his lips when he when he goes, F it. <laughs> and he just heads for the, for the yard out here, basically. Uh, and the people in the next room over are, like, you know, pushing the desk out of the way and coming out the door. Uh, Did we knock one of them unconscious? Yes. Or have they, one have of the sol one there? of the soldiers. Yeah, one of the people. One of the people that are. Yes, the last guy that ran dove on his buddy and drug them both underground. He was hauling his buddy over his shoulder as he ran away. So we haven't captured anybody. Not of the three soldiers. You got this group of scientists that worked here. Mm. Clearly, they need to be questioned, but right, right, right. But that four-man squad of super soldiers that showed up, no, they all got away again, just like <laughs> the last time they showed up. But these characters don't know about that. <laughs> Might have to be our next, uh, our next uh, training drill. So. Yeah, I don't think Grandma Niece is going to be happy about this. <laughs> Probably not. <clears throat> Definitely not the Oxford Commando. All right, so the MDA is safely away. I'm just going to assume that y'all haul the scientists and all the all the surviving workers here out into the uh, parking lot. Uh, you hear police sirens in the distance over the comm. Sharon lets you know she has called in law enforcement. Mm. Uh, so you'll have police showing up and some uh, spear. Uh, she, she, she has alerted some contacts she has in spear, so they should be sending some agents out. Uh, just in case whoever, just in case whoever was running this lab was bribing local law enforcement. Yeah. Sure. Do I need to make a copy of the copy I have on this USB for a spear? It might not be a bad idea. Yeah. Truthfully, yeah. Helios, can you come with me for the computer stuff? I barely made it through the first time. Yeah. No, <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> He has some more code for you to sort out. Uh, no, no. So, yeah. I, 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 well, <laughs> it's more of remembering where the English word for copy is. Let's go. Uh, so, yeah, by the time they show up, y'all have gone in, grabbed another, another flash drive off somebody's desk, made another copy. Uh, uh, the police show up. All the workers there are, are kind of freaked out. The uh, police start questioning him, trying to sort out. 
you know, the general consensus of soldiers trying to kill us, you know, turn the building into glass, which it's still glass when they show up. Uh, well, not glass, but, you know. Transparent, the, shiny stuff. Yeah, to, to the human eye, it might as well be glass or something. Uh, what do you tell the police about what went down here? Honestly, I don't really see much of a reason to bullshit about it. The uh, MDM. MDM or MDL? I keep forgetting. MDM. Um, Mutant Defense Militia. Gotcha. Oh, uh, yeah, the MDM uh, busted them because they were doing illegal, uh, fucked up science experiments on mutants and people with powers. Um, like, if they want to see what kind of shit they were doing, like, there is a video pulled up on the computer in the director's office that. We can show them. And we also hand them over one of the copies of the uh, files to steer. Okay. Uh, oh, and the police, you know, nothing suspicious going on as far as how they're reacting to this. Uh, the one or two that step into the office to see the footage you're talking about, you know, they've been to crime scenes, they don't lose their lunch, but one of them does get a little green, you know, watching the live <laughs> vivisection. Well, probably just an exploratory surgery, but anyway. Uh, you know, they're concerned about where, they, where the MDM may have taken these people. Uh, but you present, you immediately present them enough evidence that they're taking everybody that worked here into custody for questioning. Uh, and, they're, they, and they're there maybe 30 minutes before uh, Spear... Personnel show up and take control of the situation. Uh, and, you know, b both sets of them go through, you know, ask you what happened and go through the questions. Uh, the security footage in the lab was shut down. You know, the MDM shut that down when they showed up. So there's no recordings of what happened inside as far as the actual fight. Uh But, uh, so yeah, you make your report, uh, about the time the, uh, uh, by the time the press is showing up, you know, they're showing up, they're rolling out the camera, they're getting you on camera, and that's about the time the sedan zips overhead and teleports you up. <laughs> It's it's like Sharon's timing it just perfect so that the, so that the media gets a really good shot of y'all knows you you were there but you don't actually get, have to talk to him too much. <laughs> yeah, she's she's, she's probably pretty smart about that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, as you start to fly away, uh. Uh, Helios, you get a text on your phone. I mean, it might still be in Puppet's pocket when the text comes in. Oh, yeah, here you go. Uh, it basically, it's basically like, uh, uh, let's see, who would be, I bet Grim would not be doing the texting. We'll say Wraith is doing the texting. Hey, we're getting, you know, we're getting the mutant test subjects to safety. Uh, you might want to send somebody by this rest, this rest stop here. Uh, not all the test subjects were mutants, so we left them there. I pass that along to our uh, niece. She's like, that's kind of dickish. Yep. <clears throat> but she but she gets on the radio and, and you know, <laughs> her spear contact. Uh, and he, he he has some spear people drive out and put him up, uh, pick him up. Uh, and what her contact gets back with you with is about half the test subjects here were were flat out mutants. Uh but then there were a few people that had powers by other means. There were 
some people that they, for some reason, thought they might be able to trigger powers in or give powers to. Jesus. Uh, certain, based on certain genetic markers they were looking for. Neither her or her contact have enough of, of a genetics background to know if, if that was just kookery or if they were actually owned to something. Hmm. Uh, uh, but so, none, of, like, none of the ones left behind were the ones in really, really bad shape. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so basically, if it was like the, the Fantastic Four, they wouldn't have made the cut. Even though they have powers, they weren't born with them. So. No, no. Some of the but, people some of the people had powers from other... Just oh, kind of so randomly had powers. So they, they, they were doing a a general experimentation. Mutants just seem to be the easy. Maybe maybe they were just the easiest victims to get. Okay. Uh, major corporations have often had. There's, there's been an underground like mutant slave trade or test subject trade for a long time. Uh, that's a lot of the people the MDM go after. Uh, them and the mutant underground. Creepy. Yes, very much so. Uh, the government has started cracking down on that to some degree, but for a long time the government would just turn a blind eye to it. Because, you know, hey, if one of these guys happens to find a way to make super soldiers for us, that would be kind of nifty. Hmm. Uh, Hello, uh, text, text free back. Uh, thanks. A little dickish, but thanks. <laughs> Look, they weren't dying or anything. <laughs> and the MDM is focused on mutants. Oh, yeah, and I, got, I, I respect that. By the way, where do you get your powers from? <laughs> um, I do lots of push-ups, sit-ups, and drink my juice. <laughs> you get an eye roll emoji back. <laughs> uh But uh, when you get back to base, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think, is there anything she would criticize you for? But everyone got away again. Yeah. yeah. That, would, that would probably She's be She's not happy about that. But she is, but, you know, she's quick to point out, when you run across... Unknown villains, you don't know what they do, and they wind up having some kind of weird movement power. There's not always anything you can do. Uh, she can tell you plenty of stories, you know, about your dad, where, you know, somebody, you know, yeah, he, <laughs> he stopped the plot, but the person got away because, you know, they could go insubstantial or uh, they could step into water puddles and disappear into other water puddles. I mean, Escape back to the fifth dimension. Yep. <laughs> it became 17 hot air balloons at once. <laughs> Turns out you had to pop all 17 to catch up, and I just didn't know. <laughs> uh, the worst part was they screamed every time you hit them, so I just <laughs> stopped. But, uh. Uh. She tells you, you gotta be careful, you know, you gotta be careful about spilling up the group. In dangerous, you know, in, in a dangerous situation, uh, you know the 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 second half of you that entered the building ladder should have been on the radio asking asking directions instead of wandering around. Even though it probably saved lives that you ran into those soldiers before they just got loose to the facility, uh, they were probably a wet works team there to clean up loose ends. Uh, Something about the way you describe their look to her, though, gets her thinking. She, she'll have to contact somebody and check on something. Uh, uh, she encourages you to go through the information, you know, uh, the bo both the pictures of the physical files and the, the digital information you've got. Uh, Y'all yeah. will probably be spending days poring over that. She tells you that's going to be uh, it'll be a good example for you of the uh, less fun and exciting aspects of the job. <laughs> uh, the information you got is very interesting. It seems to be quite a list of illicit 
super soldier programs, superhuman research programs. Uh, a lot of the stuff is defunct, supposedly. Well, or defunct, but they've got like all the data that the project ever put together. Uh, there are references to the project that created Squadron, uh, which, you know, that was a big hubba baloo and there was a public trial, you know. So the name of that project, the information on it, is kind of out there. Uh, there is a reference to uh, a Project Achilles. Mm. Interesting. Uh, a few years back, their, their first successful test subject escaped, apparently. Uh, and was loose for a little while and got recaptured. Uh, based on researching him, though, they managed to produce four more successful uh, uh, Achilles. Yeah, basically, subjects of the Achilles process. Uh, when you pull up pictures of these guys, no, when you see pictures of them, they are not in the military gear. And in the military year, they had goggles that kind of obscured their faces, so... But they're built just like the guys you were just fighting. So you're pretty sure these guys are part of one of these projects. Hmm. Do we have a history of uh, known sightings of these guys? Uh, let's see. No, it does not. There, there are, There is no information in here on what sort of missions they've been sent on. This is all the research on their development. Okay. Uh, but basically, they were declared successful, and whoever is over these people took them off to have them doing things. Uh, uh, oh, go ahead. Let's see. The The doctor that was in charge of the uh, program to create... Well, that, that ended up creating Squadron... Uh, there is a reference to them collecting him. Uh, and the date is recent enough that it would have been after all the trials where that guy was supposed to have been put away. Uh, Ma'am. Go ahead. And, and there is a few, a few files from like foreign super soldier programs. Uh, they're not complete. This is like stuff maybe spy agencies got, and then these guys got a hold of, or maybe these guys have spies overseas. Uh, so, was their ability to burrow um, was that, or do we even know um, if that was part of the project, an ability that was given to them because of that, or because of some equipment that they had? That was an ability the original successful test subject had. Uh, that I believe they these guys had an improved version. Uh, okay. No, no, it was like just the same power. But yeah, that these four guys are basically successful knockoffs of their one successful. Of what was previously their one successful. Uh, the Achilles program was all about unlocking potential. They weren't going for specific powers. Uh, their one successful subject could burrow and he was super strong. Uh, though there were some side effects to his power, but these guys appear more or less normal other than their, you know, the, the sheer side is like you got four Arnold Schwarzeneggers in his prime walking around. Uh, but yeah, the burrowing and the strength is just something they got from him. Uh, it does note they did not get his full durability. Was it the platypus? Was it the myrmidon? <laughs> the myrmidon! <laughs> oh no, I don't like that implication! The myrmidon has not been spotted in, oh... Two or three years now.
Nothing in their file lists him, names him as the Myrmidon, though. They mentioned the name they've got of the of the original su successful test subject is Jackson Warren. Uh, can we pull up a photo of Jackson? Or rummage through well, a database? None of our characters would know what the Myrmidon looks like. Obviously. I guess, was the Myrmidon you... from the first season? He was, yeah, yeah, he was a player in the first season that didn't get to stay very long. Uh yeah. But he would have still been known in the news. So when the first spear team got organized, you could you could point at them and go, "They're missing a guy. They're missing a couple guys." Uh, the Murdoch when he was heroing looked like a, a man made of stone, with like some armor bits, and he would cut. He would he would just rise up out of the ground. You know. Oh, what was it? How how was it? He would say it. Basically, proclaiming. Uh, what a great day it was for the fates had given had given you all a hero, and he, you know, <laughs> very Marvel's Hercules or Batman the Brave and the Bold's Aquaman was very much uh, what Marvin spoke. Um, uh, <laughs> and yes, he was spotted working with the unknown several times, and then hasn't been seen since. And then the unknowns, of course. Transitioned into into Spears' first official team. But all right, uh, things have wrapped up pretty well. We've got our information. Yep, yeah, it is about four thirty, which uh, makes up for us starting a little late. Yeah. So yeah, we will wrap here for now with you know. This information about clearly all these all these illegal super soldier programs are still going on in some fashion. Right. Well, we know this this universe has taken a dark turn from the second season when I hopped in because now we've got mutants being oppressed and super soldier experimentation. But all that stuff was brought <laughs> up in first season, so long time <laughs> viewers know what's going on. <laughs> and Zach and Tyler. There's like one of you out there. We love you. We appreciate you. <laughs> send us your address. We will send you a basket of cookies and fruit. Uh, there's one of the guys on the Icons Facebook group over. In, I think he, I think he's actually the guy that did the German translation of the game. Oh, cool. Oh, uh, yeah, I forget his name. Yeah, yeah. There's one person who watches regularly or listens. I don't. Know, I don't remember which way, which way he does it. But yeah. <laughs> and, and and my friend from India likes to listen. Nice. Yes. You know, for a little while there, we had a lot of downloads from India. That we we I had just put up the uh, two of the the captivate is the I think the name of the uh, is it is our host for the podcast version. Uh, and yeah, that first couple of months that I put us on two of India's big podcatcher, whatever's you know, their Apple Podcasts or whatever over there. A lot of people were checking us out. Cool. This show and the and the uh, man, we're too old for this. It's died down somewhat since then. Well, hopefully, we've turned a few people onto a pretty fun little game. Hopefully, hopefully. And that's all I want. Anybody watching this, I don't care that they sit there and go, "This guy does not know what he's doing." <laughs> as long as they also know that everybody's having fun, maybe you don't have to be good at this hobby to enjoy this hobby. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll see y'all uh, y'all later. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't remember if I did a uh, if I went through and did everybody's names at the beginning like I usually did. Well, we did not. Well, anyway, I've been we your did GM it for the, the sound day. Check. <laughs> anyway, I've been to your GM for the day, Jason, and with me has been Mike as transmuter. Hey, Zach as Helios. Thank you for joining us. Taylor as puppet. See you. See you. And Curtis says. Sethagua? Sethagua. Sethagua. <laughs> Laters, don't forget to subscribe. Support our sponsor. <laughs> if we had a sponsor. <laughs> Trust me, if we had a sponsor, I'd be talking about it. Uh, but we'll see y'all later. <laughs>